Hey guys, welcome to part 1 of what if Naruto went back in time and fell in love with Sinead, if you enjoy the video then like, share and subscribe as it inspires me to make more such videos. So let's get started. Chapter 1, Back to the Past. Scarred Battlefield. End of 4th Shinobi World War Daoji Ninkai Taisen. Standing in the middle of this battlefield off the southern coast of Fire Country is a lone man. The man in question stands at 5'8", with a fit and live frame whose very stance screams dangerous. He has spiky sun-kissed blonde hair, his eyes which are usually a dark blue are now purple with three concentric rings around the black pupil and three tone-like markings on each of the first two rings. The Rinnegan, he also has three whisker-like marks on each of his cheeks. He is wearing a worn and tattered dark orange tracksuit, with black along the shoulder zipper and bottom of his jacket, and black lines down his pant legs on his feet are black shinobi sandals, under his jacket he wears mesh armor, and around his forehead is a headband with a leaf symbol. This young man is Naruto as a Maki Namikaze Chunin of the village hidden in the leaves Jinchuriki of the nine-tailed demon fox Kyubi no Yoko Hero of the leaf son of the fourth Hokage Yondime Hokage, Minato Namikaze and the red death aka no Shikushino is a Maki and most recently the only survivor of the fourth shinobi war. As he looks around at the bodies of his comrades scattered around he can't help but to shake his head at the pointless loss of lives. It was all going so well to sure the revelation that the man who had called himself Madara Uchiha was really his father's wayward student Abito Uchiha was shocking. Yes the army of dead shinobi and kunoichi was freaky and difficult to deal with. But they managed to seal most of them away and even stop the caster of the impure world reincarnation Edo Tensi. No surprise it was Kabuto. Nowhere things had started to go downhill is when the real Madara Uchiha managed to keep himself from being sent back to his death by the ending of the reincarnation technique. After that all hell broke loose, the man who had once been considered to be on the level of a god just like his rival the first Hokage Shadai Hokage, had proceeded to lay waste to the five cage Gokage, leaving them all on the edge of death. Then he had joined Abito in his fight against Naruto himself, and the only other Jinchuriki yet to have his tailed beast extracted from him, Killer B who held the eight-tailed ox octopus Hachibai Ushioni. Very soon however they were overwhelmed and both tailed beasts were extracted from them to complete the ten tails Jubi however while the two Uchiha had been busy with the last two Jinchuriki, the third and final Uchiha had shown up with his team Hawk as well as Orochimaru. The wayward snake Sanin had healed the cage, and just after finishing four new undead appeared, shocking everyone. The four in question were the first four Hokage, Hashirama Senju Tobirama Senju, Hiruzen Sarutobi, and Minato Namikos. Together the five living cage, the four reincarnated Hokages, Team Hawk as well as Orochimaru went off to help Naruto and B. Long story short the fighting was fast and furious, Naruto who was at the edge of death was healed by his teammate Sakura and then his father placed his half of the nine tails, whose name is Korama, into him. After that Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura joined together as Team 7 again to fight the two Uchiha and the battle went well Naruto managed to convince Abito to turn against Madara, but the ancient Uchiha controlled the other man to use his Rinnegan to bring himself back to life. After he came back to life Madara sealed the ten tails into himself making him its Jinchuriki causing the battle to become harder. Naruto and Sasuke both were visited by the father of all shinobi and the first man to possess the Rinnegan the sage of six paths Rikuto Sen and Hagoromo Atsuki. The old sage informed them that they were the current reincarnations of his two sons, the creators of the Uchiha and Senju clans Indra and Asura. He then proceeded to give each of them a gift to Naruto he gave his potent chakra along with the mark of the sun on his right hand to Sasuke he gave one true Rinnegan I also call the Rin Sharingan with his visual prowess and the mark of the moon on his left hand. Also Naruto had an added gift, that being a bit of the chakra of every one of the tailed beasts. After leaving the sage, the two young men had fought Madara on even footing, even gaining the upper hand on him to the point that he became so weakened that the ten tails began to take him over and morph his body only to morph into a woman in possession of very delicate facial features. She had extremely long sweeping white hair that touched the ground. Most noticeable were two brown horns which stuck out from her head, she possessed the Bakugan, and also had a third eye on the center of her forehead that's eyelids parted vertically. Her eyebrows were cut very short a symbol of nobility, and she wore a dark shade of lipstick on her lips, and a dark shade of nail polish on her long fingernails. She wore the transitional high-collared Heim kimono which was adorned with intricate lines that are gold and purple and tomi running down the center and edges of the gown. She was also pale-skinned, the woman turned out to be the mother of the sage, 
Kagiya Atsuki, also the mother of all chakra. The battle got much harder after that to the point that Abito sacrificed his life for Naruto, and left Kakashi with both of his Sharingan eyes for a little while. In the end Naruto and Sasuke were able to use their marks to seal her away after Sakura hit her from above and it looked like it was all over as the spirit of the sage and the spirits of all the dead cage teleported them back from Kaguya's dimension. However it didn't last long as Sasuke turned on them again attempting to recapture the tailed beasts, and to keep that from happening Sakura, Kakashi and Naruto tried to stop him, which ended up with Sasuke killing the first two, and beginning a fight with Naruto. The two young men who had become like gods themselves, fought tooth and nail, however Naruto pulled his punches as he still thought his old friend could be redeemed. That illusion was shattered when Sasuke killed the five cage, especially the fifth Hokage Tsunade Senju and the fifth Keisuke Gara Sabaku two of the blonde's precious people. After that the gloves came off and the sage began to fight at full power, even entering into his Ashura avatar and fighting toe to toe with Sasuke's Sasana avatar. In the end Naruto managed to come out the victor, finally killing the last Achiha with his original technique, Raisin Shuriken however as he lay there dying Sasuke smiled and congratulated his brother in all but blood and then shocked him by telling him to take his eyes and use them to lead the world into a peaceful future, hence Naruto now having the Rinnegan. After shaking off the horrible memories of the past few days, the blonde turns towards the still present spirits of the sage and cages, as well as the reincarnated Hokage, as his father steps up to him Naruto, I'm so sorry that you've had to go through all of this. I can't help but to put most of the blame on myself, if only I'd have been faster that night then there would have been no need to seal Korama inside you. You never would have had to go through the hardships you have, if not for me son. The younger blonde just shakes his head sadly, it's not your fault to San. You did what you had to. No, I place the blame for all of this on the generations before yours. If they could have only stopped trying to prove who was more superior for so long and learned to get along then it never would have given rise to monsters like Madara Chiha. Minato can only nod sadly to his son's words, as can all the other cage. However Hagoromo gets a brilliant idea. What if you could change that? What if you could go back in time to a point before the Akatsuki before even the Second Shinobi War? Would you take that chance to change events? Everyone looks at him in shock. However Naruto only has to think on it for a second before he answers, yes. If it would mean I could save certain people from having to ever deal with the pain and suffering brought on by the second and third wars, then I'd do it. The old sage smiles at this, good, then I will give you that chance. There is a technique that I know which can be used to send you back in time however the power required for it is enormous and it is why I myself never used it to go back and stop my mother from eating the chakra fruit. The ghost of the third case gitch being ever the brilliant man decides to ask, if that's true then how are you to perform the technique now? If you haven't forgotten you're as dead as we are. The old man simple chuckles, awe and inquisitive mind, you remind me of my son Asura, always asking questions. The answer is that with the four Hokage, as well as my sons and daughters the tailed beasts, we will have enough chakra required for this technique however all of you will have to help with the hand signs as there are thousands. Everyone nods in understanding of this, even all nine of the tailed beasts, who are more than happy to do their father a favor. Hagoromo turns to Naruto then, say your goodbyes, because once you have there are some things you and I need to go over about the technique. The blonde nods his head and turns to the four Hokages, first speaking to Hashirama, Lord first I just want to say that it's been an honor to meet you. I always heard stories about how strong you were, but thought they weren't real, but after watching you in action I have to say you're probably the most awesome Hokage ever. This causes the brown haired man to rub the back of his head with a huge smile on his tanned face, well thanks Naruto-san. I want to say good luck to you in the past, I'm sure that wherever you're going, I'll already be dead, so I'll be sure to watch how you change the world. The blonde shakes his hand then turns to the second, Lord second, you're every bit the serious and pragmatic man that Urka sensei always made you out to be in his lessons. But you're also pretty strong and cool in your own right, before the other day I had no idea that you were the one to actually invent my dad's famous technique and use it first. In my book that's pretty dang cool. You're a true role model for what a shinobi should be. The white-haired Senju brother just crosses his arms, but has a small smirk on his face, thank you Izumaki-san ordinarily I would reprimand you for wearing orange, 
but you've showed me that a ninja is more than stealth and doing what is necessary. You have showed me that being a ninja means remaining true to yourself, so never lose that spirit. I'll be watching you from the other side with my brother. He pats him on the shoulder and walks to stand next to his brother. The next person in the line nearly makes the blonde teen cry however he gives the man a huge smile Gigi from you I learned the will of fire, but more importantly, I learned what it's like to have a grandfather. You were always there for me when I needed you, and I know that you did your best to give me a normal life and for that I'll always be grateful. I hope that whenever I'm going back to that we can have just as close a relationship, maybe even father-son or big brother-little brother one. I was so sad when you died old man, but I realized that you'd want me to move forward and carry on your will of fire, and so I've tried to, I hope you're proud of me. Sarutobi actually embraces the young man in a hug as he speaks, Naruto-kun, you have made this old man very proud. I've watched you from the pure world, and have seen the man you've grown into and couldn't be any prouder if you were my actual grandson. You more than anyone embody the will of fire and have become a splendid shinobi. I'm sure that whatever time period you land in that you will achieve your dream and become Hokage. Always stay strong Naruto. When he steps back he pats his shoulder and then moves over to his two teachers and predecessors, leaving Naruto with his father to have a private moment. Minato looks down slightly at his son as he's two inches taller than him and roams over his face seeing his beloved Kushina and the teen's facial shape and the rest himself, he smiles Naruto, my son. Today is your birthday? How old are you now? The younger blonde looks up at him with a sad smile. I'm 17 today dad. The fourth Hokage just smiles wider, 17 huh? Pretty much a grown man. What a man you've grown into, I'm proud of you Naruto, and I'm sure if your mother were here she'd feel the same way, though she'd probably be trying to chase all the girls from you, ha ha ha. Naruto can't help but to chuckle at that and ask, you really think Ka-chan would be proud of me? Minato nods his head, I'm sure she would and she'd be ecstatic that her Sochi was one of the most powerful shinobi to ever live. Never forget this one important thing no matter where you go. Naruto, your mother, and I love you. This causes him to tear up and rush into his father's arms, giving him a huge hug as the man pats his back. After a few minutes they separate and Naruto turns to the Sage of Six Paths, alright Sen and Jiji tell me all about this jutsu. The old sage chuckles at his enthusiasm but answers nonetheless, a light then first thing you need to know is that we're aiming to send you back to a few years after the first war. Secondly you won't be going back as you are now, meaning not as a 17 year old, the technique will do one of two things, a to age you to a younger form or be send your spirit, and chakra into the body of a freshly born baby. The young sage's jaw drops at this, what? I can't go back as a baby. I'd have to completely start from scratch with all my techniques and everything. I'd take to aging over that. Speaking of which how much would I did age? Hagoromo shakes his head, as far as to aging goes you would go back to the form of yourself at about 4 years old. Also you'll get to keep your gifts, meaning you will still retain the bloodlines given to you by the tailed beasts, as well as the Rinnegan and the Six Path Sage mode however you want the Rin Sharingan, or the Six Paths mode right away, those you will have to train to gain back as will you have to train yourself in the lava magnet and boil releases, not to mention the elements that make them up. The blonde crosses his arms at that, I guess that makes sense alright I'm fine with training my skills back up. Heck, I can even take the time to properly learn Fuenjutsu and then maybe I can find the second s Hiration and learn and improve it myself. Anything else I should know? The old monk nods his head, Yes, as a result of the Rinnegan you now have a major affinity to all five elements and will gain the additional sub-elements of ice and wood, but again you will have to work for them. Also your appearance will change slightly, mostly just your hair, you will gain the red hair of all Izumaki-o and your summoning contract to the toads will be void, so you'll have to find another animal to summon, perhaps even of a canine type. Naruto's face brightens slightly at the mention of gaining the wood release and his first real friend Haku's ice release, and even smiles brightly at the fact that he's going to have his mother's pretty red hair finally, but frowns at losing the totes, completely missing the hint of what animal he should gain a contract with instead. After a few moments takes a breath, okay I understand, well let's get this show on the road six paths Gigi. The old sage smiles and nods his head as he singles all the cage to begin their hand sings as he begins his and the tailed beasts begin to focus their chakra, causing a huge flare of light. 
Once all the signs are done and the right amount of energy is gathered the old man intones, hidden samsara technique, space-time transportation. After he says this a rip in space and time opens up in front of Naruto, and the blonde takes one more look at his father and the other hokages before he steals his nerves and jumps into the swirling mass of lights, and seconds later the yang half of Korama jumps in after him and the rip closes. The four hokages' bodies begin to break apart as Minato turns to the old sage, are you sure this will work? That Naruto will be able to change things. The original god of Shinobi Shinobi no Kami looks seriously at the man. I have the utmost faith in him, after all he is the, the current reincarnation of my son Asura. However he won't be able to change everything. The second and third wars will still occur, however their outcomes will be altered due to his presence. He will also be able to bridge the gaps between the nations over time and keep groups like Akatsuki from having to form at all. In the end, all you can do is believe in your son, as I believed in mine. Minato nods his head at this as he finishes breaking apart and his spirit, as well as those of all the other cage present head back to the pure world. Hagoromo takes one last looks at the remaining eight-tailed beasts and smiles. You are all free my children. Live your lives how you see fit from here on. Goodbye. With that he fades away back to his own dimension as the tailed bests all head their separate ways. Inside the portal. Pain. That is all he can feel as he hurls through time. He can feel all his bones cracking and shrinking in on themselves, and he knows he's de-aging. All he can see aside from the lights of the tunnel are images playing backwards of events from the elemental nations. Then he feels an influx of demonic chakra enter his system and in his hazy state asks internally, Korama what's going on? What are you doing in there? From within his mindscape he gets a response from his tenant and partner sorry about that kit. That influx just now was my yang half coming back and joining back with me. Good news is I'm whole again, and that means you'll have more power to use from me later on. Bad news is that your chakra reserves are going to be double what they originally were when you were four, which means way more chakra control training. All he can do is sigh, just great, oh well at least I might finally get my chakra control up to a good enough level to perform genjutsu and even medical ninjutsu. Just after having that thought he sees the portal open back up and knows that he's about to be deposited at his destination. Hidden Leaf Village. Training Ground 7. 1 YAFW year after first war. The skies around the village can be seen clouding over and becoming dark something which makes all the shinobi in the village go on edge as they can tell this isn't a natural occurrence. In training ground 7 there's a large flash of light, the opening of a rift in space, and then a huge explosion which scares away all animals in the area. After the explosion the rift closes and disappears, and when the smoke clears it shows the small body of a four-year-old Naruto in a crater. Only he's different, whereas before he had blonde hair, his hair is now blood red still spiky, but much shorter than it was think his hair two years after the fourth war, and his whisker marks are now gone. Also his clothes have changed he's now in a white t-shirt with the Uzumaki spiral on the front and tan colored shorts and on his feet are white shinobi sandals. After a few minutes a group shinobi arrive in the training grounds, surrounding the crater, these shinobi are all wearing white animal masks. They are the elite unit of the village the Anbu, and leading them is a young man of 21 he stands at 5'4 is a tan-skinned man with spiky dark brown hair and a small goatee on his chin and brown eyes. He wears an all-black jumpsuit with mesh segments over the lower portions of his limbs, and a green gauntlet that covers much of his right arm. He also wears an armored hood with a bandana-like forehead protector over this, tied with two long straps, and on the back of his jumpsuit is the kanji for third Hokage. This man is the third Hokage of the Leaf, the new god of Shinobi Hiruzen and Saratobi. He takes in the scene quickly, and seeing that there is no danger he motions for his men to stand down as he makes his way into the crater and to the child. He turns the boy over and looks him over searching for any wounds, after a few moments he finds none, but can sense that the child is suffering from chakra exhaustion. The Anbu with a cat mask steps forward, Lord Hokage we should check the boy for traps. He could be a spy. The young man shakes his head, no that's not necessary. I've already checked him for any traps and found none. He has chakra exhaustion and needs to go to the hospital. Besides based on his hair color and the clan crest on his shirt I'd say he's an Izumaki and if that's true then he won't be harmed. We'll have to wait till he wakes up to find out how he got here. You're all dismissed. 
with that they all disappear via body flicker, heading back to their posts, while Hiruzen himself body flickers to the hospital to have the boy treated. When he arrives he explains the situation to the nurses and doctors, and they take the red head to give him the standard treatment for chakra exhaustion. He also orders that the boy be placed in a private room, and to be notified as soon as he wakes. With that done he heads off to the Senju compound to have a chat with the current head and matriarch of the clan, Maito Izumaki Senju. Senju compound. Minutes later. A few minutes later Sarutobi arrives to the Senju compound, which is one of the three largest compounds in the village, rivaled only by the Uchiha and Hyuga clan compounds. The compound itself is like a mini village, surrounded by wooden walls all laden with various seals to strengthen them. Inside there are many houses for the members of the clan, and as he walks through the streets of the compound he notices a few houses empty as a result of the residents having died in the first war, which only ended last year. Also as he walks he's greeted by many of the still living clan members to which he just waves nods his head at them. Eventually he reaches his destination, the main house which belongs to the head of the clan it's a two-story traditional Japanese style house with shoji doors, and above the front door is a huge version of the Senju clan symbol of Vajra. He knocks on the door, and awaits an answer. A few moments later the door is answered, but not by who he expected, as he looks down and sees a small four-year-old girl. The girl has long blonde hair which is done up into twin short pigtails, she is fair-skinned with big brown eyes, and her cheeks have a bit of rosiness to them that comes from youth. She is wearing a cream-colored sundress, this girl is Tsunade Senju granddaughter to Maito and the late first Hokage Hashirama Senju, second in line to the Senju clan after her own father. Seeing the little girl hears and smiles down at her, Hello Tsunade-chan, is your grandmother home by any chance? The little blonde upon seeing who's at the door gives a beaming smile, Aha, that Chan is in the sitting room. Come on I'll show you where Sario G. She grabs his hand and tries to drag him along all he can do is chuckles at the little girl's enthusiasm and go along with her, remembering to kick off his sandals in the entryway first. As they walk to the sitting room Sinead is babbling away about her training and how the academy is going as she joined it just this year. Here Zen for his part only makes small comments here and there, however she abruptly asks say sorry Ojizen why do you need to talk to Bachan? This catches the Hokage off guard slightly, however he catches himself and answers, it's a personal matter Sinead Chan. I'm sure Maito Sama will tell you about it much later on. This causes the girl to pout. However it doesn't last long as they reach the sitting room and she opens the door and announces their arrival Bat Chan. Sorry Ochi is here to see you. Inside the room sits a woman a little older than 50 however looks no older than 30. She has long bright red hair and large pupil less eyes. She wears an elaborate high collared kimono with the Uzo Shogakure symbol on the back of the obi which is tied around her waist. Her hair is arranged into buns with hair pins in them and three clips in the front. She also wears a dark shade of red lipstick and has a gem-like marking on her forehead. She also wears tags with kanji written on them in her hair decals. All in all she's a beautiful woman. And one of the strongest kunoichi to ever live this is Maito Izumaki Senju. Maito upon seeing both her granddaughter and her husband and brother-in-law student smiles at them. Su Chan how many times have I told you not to just barge in? This causes the girl to scowl slightly sorry Bat Chan. The woman nods her head and turns to the Hokage himself, Sorry Chan how good to see you. Though I'm surprised that you could take the time away from your duties to visit. Is this a social call or part of your official duties as Sandime Hokage? The 21 year old sighs at her still calling him Sorry Chan, but shakes his head and responds, Actually it's a little of both Mito Sama. I need to have a private word with you about an incident that happened about an hour ago. The red-haired woman nods her head and turns to Tsunade, Su Chan you run along now, maybe go and play with some of the other children. The little blonde nods her head and runs off, as Sarutobi steps into the room and closes the door, and a moment later the room glows blue then stops, as Mito has just activated a privacy seal. He takes a seat on a mat opposite her and begins, now as you know one hour ago the skies over the village suddenly clouded over and darkened. She nods to this as he continues well I knew it wasn't a natural occurrence and at first feared maybe Cloud Village was launching an attack with their storm release users. That turned out not to be the case, there was suddenly an explosion in the 7th training grounds, and so I and a group of Anbu went to check out the scene. What we found was not what we expected at all. 
Mido hums at this and asks, what did you find then? The younger man sighs as he answers we found a crater, obviously created by the explosion, however inside the crater wasn't an enemy nin but a child. This shocks the red head as her eyes widen slightly a child. How old? The man nods yes a child about the same age as Sine Chan I would guess, so about 4 years old. However that's not the oddest thing, the oddest thing is that despite being in the middle of a huge explosion he had no injuries at all, the only thing that looked wrong with him was chakra exhaustion. So after checking him over for any traps of any kind and finding nothing I ordered the Andy back to their positions and took him to the hospital where he is being treated now. Mayo sighs in relief at that news, but looks at him in confusion, while it is good that the child is okay, I don't see why you had to come here to inform me of his arrival. Hirazen chuckles at that and rubs the back of his head nervously. Well you see what I left out was that the boy has blood red hair, and was wearing a shirt with the Uzumaki symbol on the front of it. Going off those things I deduced that he's possibly a member of the Uzumaki clan, and therefore one of your kinsmen. She sighs at this and decides to reprimand him. You should have mentioned that to begin with Sari Chan. But just because the boy was wearing my clan's symbol and has red hair does not mean he is an Uzumaki. Not everyone with red hair is of the Uzumaki clan Baka. The 21-year-old nods at her point true, but there's an easy way to find out if he is in fact an Uzumaki. First is to wait till he awakes and ask him, and second is to see just how large his chakra pool is when it's fully restored. Mido nods her head at this and the two then begin to talk about other things, however when the conversation moves to his love life he decides that it's time to go and heads back to the front door. Just after he puts on his sandals the door opens and in walks a man this man is taller than himself standing at 5'10 with straight dark brown hair and brown eyes and tan skin like himself. This man is Idama Senju, the son of Mido and Hashirama father of Sinead and heir to the Senju clan, named for one of his father's brothers who died during the clan wars. Idama upon seeing him smiles Hirizen. Good to see you. Are you leaving? Saratobi smiles at his slightly older friend, yes afraid so. I've been visiting with your mother, but now I have to get back to my arch enemy. Paperwork. This causes Idama to chuckle and pat him on the shoulder. I don't envy you being Hokage my friend. Well see you around, try to come back sometime, and we'll spar. The younger man smiles at his friend and nods his head as the man takes off his sandals and heads into the house while he himself body flickers away back to the Hokage Tower. Leaf Hospital. Two days later. Naruto groans as he begins to wake up, the first thing that hits his senses is the smell of disinfectant and bleach, and he knows right away where he's at, great I'm in the hospital, the one place I hate the most. Wonder how long I've been out. A moment later he opens his eyes to see the white ceiling of the hospital confirming his thoughts as he lifts his right arm up to look at it and sees how small it is meaning the old sage's jutsu worked. A few seconds later a nurse walks in to check his vitals and seeing him awake smiles, ah you're awake little one. How are you feeling? He looks at the woman for a moment and answers, I feel okay I guess. How long have I been out nurse San? The woman giggles at this and responds, my name is Nanus little one. You've been here two days recovering from chakra exhaustion. Now lay still while I check up on your condition. He nods his head as she does some hand signs and checks his vitals and sees how his chakra pools are doing however when she does her eyes widen, as he has more chakra than most chunin. She quickly gets over her shock and stops running her diagnostics, well everything seems to be good, and might I say you have some impressive chakra levels for a 4 year old. He blushes a little at this, thank you. So can I get out of here now? She shakes her head at his question. I'm afraid not. You'll have to stay here a while longer, we have to inform Hokage-sama that you've awakened, and I'm sure he'll have some questions for you. So until then, just rest up, and we'll bring you some breakfast. With that she turns and walks out the door to inform the Chunin guarding his room to summon the Hokage. After a few minutes she returns with a tray of hospital breakfast for him, which he begrudgingly eats even though it tastes like crap. While he's eating his breakfast Saratobi walks in and when Naruto sees him his eyes widen slightly as he recognizes the man, but didn't think he'd be coming back to when he was so young. He quickly covers up his surprise as the third Hokage comes over and sits at his bedside, well young man it's good to see you're awake. You were in quite a state when we found you, 
The nurse tells me your chakra pools are fully restored and that you can leave here today after a few shots. The redhead nods at this, even though he makes a face to the thought of shots, however Saratobi continues on, now I have a few questions for you. First off, can you tell me your name? The boy thinks on it a second and then decides to go with his actual name and answers, my name is Naruto Izumaki. Who are you mister? The man chuckles at this, my name is Hiruzen Saratobi, and I'm the third Hokage. It's nice to meet you Naruto-kun. Now can you tell me how you ended up here in the leaf? The redhead starts to panic internally trying to come up with a believable story. However he suddenly gets a great backstory and gets a sad look on his face. He starts his story, I'm not sure how I got here Lord Hokage. Dot, all my life I've lived with my parents in the land of waves Nami no Kuni. But recently they died, attacked by bandits, and I was orphaned. They always said we came from a proud lineage, but never elaborated though they did say that if I was ever in trouble I could go to the Hidden Leaf Village and I plan to in a few years. But when I was going through some of my Tachan stuff, I found this seal and it activated, and then after that it's a blank. Next thing I know I'm waking up here. Saratobi listens intently and thinks over the boy's story and notices a few inconsistencies, but decides not to call him on them. I see well Naruto-kun it seems you may have stumbled on an experimental seal meant for teleportation. You're lucky that it didn't kill you and all you ended with was chakra exhaustion. Now your parents were right when they said you come from a proud lineage, you are a member of the Uzumaki clan of the land of whirlpools. The Uzumaki clan is well known for their incredible pools of chakra their longevity and their skills in fuinjutsu as well as kenjutsu. He sees Naruto's eyes light up at this as he continues on also the Uzumaki clan is the cousin clan to one of the founding clans of the leaf the Senju. As a matter of fact the current head of the Senju clan is a woman named Maito Uzumaki Senju, and I'm sure that she would love to take you in being that your clansman. She also has a granddaughter your age that I'm sure you'll get along with. Naruto smiles and nods at this in response, good then, after your shots, I'll take you to meet with Maito Sama. The redhead gets confused at this and asks, Why do you call her Maito Sama? Aren't you the leader of the village? Hiruzen chuckles at this, ha ha ha, yes I am, but Maito Sama is the widow of the first Hokage, and holds a high position within the village. That is why everyone gives her the proper respect and calls her Maito Sama, all except her immediate family, that is. Naruto nods at this as he finishes his food and Saratobi stands up and motions for the doctor and nurse to come in and give him his shots, and what not. While they're giving him his shots they also take some blood to run tests on when it's all done everyone walks out of the room so he can change back into his clothes, when he's done with that Saratobi signs him out of the hospital, and leads him to the Senju compound. Senju main house. After walking through the village together and talking a little more, they eventually reach the Senju compound. Naruto's first reaction to the sight of it is to have his jaw drop at just how large it is, however that's nothing to his reaction to the main house, this is where I'm gonna be living. It's a mansion. Saratobi chuckles at this you're not wrong, however what you should know is that the first Hokage himself built this house using his bloodline the wood release Makuton. In fact he built this entire compound using his powers. Then Maito Sama went around and applied strengthening seals to each of the homes, and the walls which make the wooden constructs as strong as steel. I'm sure that she will be teaching you how to do such things in the future. The red head can only nod at this as the young man knocks on the door. Moments later it's answered except this time by Maito herself seeing this Saratobi bows to her slightly, Maito Sama it's good to see you again. I've someone for you to meet. He then grips Naruto's shoulder and pushes him forward slightly, Maito Izumaki Senju meet Naruto Izumaki. Naruto Izumaki meet Maito Izumaki Senju. Maito looks at the four-year-old with a critical eye and does notice that he has a lot of the typical Izumaki features, especially the red hair however it's as she uses her meager chakra sensing ability that she confirms he's indeed an Izumaki incredible, only four and already he has the reserves of a high chunin. That tears it there is no doubt in my mind that this child is of my clan. With that thought in mind she smiles sweetly at him and bends down slightly to be at his level. It's nice to meet you Naruto-kun. Welcome to your new home, I hope that you find it comfortable. Naruto bows his head and responds, thank you Maito-sama, it's nice to meet you too. I've never met any other member of my family before. The older redhead scowls at this slightly, 
but her face quickly softens and she uses her right hand to lift his face so he's looking right at her. None of that Sama stuff out of you little one. We are family so therefore you may call me Mido Obeson. Now come inside so that you can meet the rest of the family. Sorry Chan thank you for bringing him, if you wouldn't mind filling out the paperwork to have him entered into the academy for me that would be appreciated. She proceeds to bring Naruto inside and shuts the door before the Hokage has a chance to answer, as he stands there blinking in shock what the. Sai I guess I have no choice but to comply. I swear I should have just let Danzo have the Hokage seat, and let him deal with all the paperwork. On second thought it's better that I'm Hokage and he's an anime captain. He'd have us still at war. He then shakes his head and disappears in a leaf body flicker. Inside the house Mido leads little Naruto towards the family room where her son daughter-in-law and granddaughter are sitting. As they walk she tells him all about the history between the Senju and Izumaki clans, regaling him with the story of how her father secured the alliance between the cousin clans with her marriage to Hashirama and how they came to love each other in time. Eventually they reach the family room and enter as everyone looks curiously at the little redhead. Sitting with Idama and Sinead is another woman, she has long blonde hair with two bangs that perfectly frame her face, she has fair skin and green eyes with a buxom figure, this woman is a Maya Senju. The three look curiously at the matriarch as Idama asks, ka chan who's the kid? Mayo smiles and places a hand on the boy's shoulder, this Idama-chan is Naruto Izumaki. He is four years old and an orphan, and as he is a member of my clan I have volunteered to take him in and raise him. Naruto-kun this is my immediate family, the man is my only son and next head of the Senju clan, Idama. The blonde-haired woman is his wife and my daughter-in-law Maya. Finally the little girl sitting on Idama's lap is my granddaughter Sanae chan she's the same age as yourself. Naruto waves at everyone hello, nice to meet you all. Tanade gets down off her father's lap and walks straight up to the redhead inspects him closely which kind of freaks him out. But only because there's a miniature version of his mother figure staring him in the face. After a few moments she backs off, smiles and puts out her hand, nice to meet you Naruto-san. Wanna be friends? The redhead blinks at this, but smiles nonetheless and takes her hand, shaking it and responds, yeah sure Tanade san I'd like that. With that she drags him over to the couch, and they little group get to know each other better for the rest of the day, eating a small family dinner, and then retire for the night. Mido leads Naruto to an empty room on the second floor and opens the door for him. This will be your room from now on Naruto-kun. I know that you just lost your parents recently, but I hope in time that you will come to view us as your family, and this house as your home. Tomorrow morning, after breakfast we will go out into the village to get you some more clothes as well as supplies for the academy. Rest well little one, good night. Naruto for his part nods his head and responds, thank you Mito Oba, I'm really grateful for all this. Good night. She smiles at his as he heads inside the room and closes the door behind him. He proceeds to head over to the bed and lay down, then he closes his eye and when he reopens them he finds himself in the familiar space of his mindscape. When he looks down at the water he sees his 17-year-old self reflected back except with his new red hair and minus the whiskers, then he looks up at the towering form of Kurama, well we made partner. I've gotta say it was a shock seeing Sarutobi Jiji that young, but even more shocking to see Bat-chan as a little girl. The giant fox just snorts at that, tell me about it Kit. I'd estimate that we're back about 15 years before the second shinobi war. Starting tomorrow you're going to have to haul ass and start training to get back in shape and get a leg up on becoming strong enough to stop things from going pear-shaped. Also don't draw on my chakra when you're around any leaf ninja, it will only end badly seeing as in this time I'm sealed inside of Mito. Naruto nods to that and yas alright well I'm going to actually go to sleep, talk to you another time Korama. With that he disappears from his mind, getting his rest for the days ahead. Chapter 2 Academy Training Days and Graduation Last time. The giant fox just snorts at that, tell me about it Kit. I'd estimate that we're back about 15 years before the second shinobi war. Starting tomorrow you're going to have to haul ass and start training to get back in shape and get a leg up on becoming strong enough to stop things from going pear-shaped. Also don't draw on my chakra when you're around any leaf ninja, it will only end badly seeing as in this time I'm sealed inside of Mito. 
Naruto nods to that, and yes, all right well I'm going to actually go to sleep, talk to you another time Korama. With that he disappears from his mind, getting his rest for the days ahead. Now. Senju main house. 5 a.m. next day. Our red-haired hero awakens with the sun, as he sits up in his bed he proceeds to rub the sleep from his eyes, then he stretches his arms over his head as he releases a yawn. After that's done he hops out of bed, his feet hitting the cold wooden floor softly as he goes over to the window and looks outside to see the sun just barely in the sky and smiles. Alright time to get to work on getting my skills back up to scratch. Hmm. Later on I have to go shopping with Mido Oba so I think I'll just spam clones to work on Shuriken Jutsu and Chakra Control. I myself will do physical exercises, have to see if Mido Oba will buy me some wrist and ankle weights to help make my body stronger and faster. With that in mind he exits his room as quietly as he possibly can, careful to to wake anyone and heads downstairs. Once he is sure he hasn't woken anyone he makes his way to the front door, puts on his sandals and heads out the door quietly, quickly making his way out of the Senju compound. As he's walking through the village he's thinking of where he can go to train in private, where no one will see or hear him when it suddenly comes to him, the forest of death. So with his training ground chosen he heads to the 44th training grounds A, K.A. the Forest of Death. After 20 minuets of walking he reaches the Forest of Death which is a training ground made up of hundreds of tall trees and is surrounded on all sides by a tall fence with multiple gates. Naruto proceeds to put his hands in the ram sign and focus chakra to his legs, and when he feels he has enough he takes a huge leap, and completely clears the top of the fence and lands inside the forest. He proceeds to run deeper inside till he finds a clearing with a river running through it, Okay this will do nicely. Time to do this. He puts his fingers in a cross-shaped sign and calls out multi-shadow clone Jutsu Taju Cage Bush and no Jutsu. In a puff of smoke 50 clones appear, all looking identical to their creator, who clicks his tongue at the number, but shakes it off and proceeds to give out orders. Alright listen up, I want you guys to split up into two groups of 25. The first group will work on chakra control, start with leaf balancing. I don't want to go through life this time with sucky chakra control. Group 2 you're working on shuriken jutsu. Since we have no shuriken or kunai to work with yet, use rocks and sharpen sticks. The clones all nod and salute at this and separate into two groups as ordered to go off and do what they're supposed to do. Naruto meanwhile decides to start his exercises, starting off with some stretching to loosen up the muscles, then after that he starts off with 20 laps around the clearing. He finishes his last lap 25 minutes after he back and is only mildly out of breath. So he decides to take a 5 minute breather, he goes over to the stream and takes a handful of water from it and drinks it down. After his break he gets back to work proceeding to do 50 push ups, 50 sit ups, 50 squats, 50 jumping jacks, and lastly 50 chin ups using a low hanging tree branch. When he finishes his workout he looks up at the sky and estimates the time to be around 7 am so he decides now is a good time to head back to the Senju house and get a shower, have some breakfast and get ready for his day with Mido. Before he leaves he tells the clones to dispel in groups of 5-2 hours from now, getting confirmation from the two groups of clones he proceeds to exit the forest of death and head back into the village proper. As he walks through on his way back to the Senju compound he notices that all the shops are now open or just opening, and he waves back to those who wave to him first. After another 15 minutes he gets back to the Senju compound, and as he walks through the streets every Senju clansman that sees him smiles and greets him kindly, to which he responds in kind. Senju Main House The redhead enters the house and takes off his shoes at the door and proceeds to head towards the stairs, however he hears a throat clear from the family room and turns to find Mido standing there with her arms crossed over her chest. Where have you been young man? Naruto chuckles nervously, but answers I went out to train. My Tachan started training me to be a ninja before he died, and he said that no matter what happened I should stick to my daily training. So I got up at 5 am and headed out to find a good training spot. Once I found a good spot I started with some stretches, then did some laps around the training ground, then did 50 sit-ups, push-ups, jumping jacks, squats and chin-ups. Then I worked on my shuriken and kunai throwing for a bit, and then finished off with chakra control. Mido's eyes widen at this news, though she is slightly surprised that he's doing such intensive physical training at 4 years old. 
Even Sinead who's been having physical training from herself Amaya and even Inama here and there since she was three only does 20 of every exercise, and has yet to work on chakra control. She quickly shakes it off and scowls, that's all good Naruto-kun, however you didn't have to leave the compound to train. We have a training ground behind the house. From this point on you will use those training grounds, I don't want to wake up to find you missing from the house, and the compound ever again. I thought that you had run away. Naruto's eyes widen at this as he steps off the stairs and walks over, and hugs the older redhead shocking her, I'm sorry Mito Oba. I didn't mean to cause you any fear or hurt. I promise from now on I'll use the training grounds out back for my morning training. Please forgive me. Mito just smiles kindly and wraps him in a hug, you are forgiven Naruto-kun. Now march upstairs and take a shower you stink. I'll have some fresh clothes placed on your bed for you, and when you're dressed come on down to the dining for breakfast. The younger redhead smiles and nods his head, rushing upstairs to get freshened up. Twenty minutes later finds Naruto entering the dining room wearing different clothes. The outfit he now has on consists of dark gray pants that go down to his shins, a short-sleeved red kimono shirt under which is mesh armor tied at the waist with a dark orange sash. All in all in the eyes of the entire Senju family he looks a lot more like a ninja now. The first to greet him is the ever-energetic Sinead, good morning Naruto-san. He smiles at her and responds, good morning Sinead-san. Then he turns to her parents, good morning Itama-san Amaya-san. The two reply to him in sync, good morning Naruto-kun slash san. As he takes his seat which is right next to Tsunade and across from Inama at the table, with Tsunade being across from her mother and Mito at the head. As they eat their breakfast of steamed rice, miso soup, grilled fish, rolled omelets, tamagoyaki, zukmano pickles and dried seaweed nori, Inama decides to bring something up to Naruto so Naruto-kun Kachan says that you left at 5 this morning to train and didn't even leave so much as a note. Do you distrust us so much you wouldn't let us know where you are and what you're doing? The little redhead swallows his food as Mito glares slightly at her son however before she can reprimand him Naruto responds, it's not that I distrust any of you Itama-san. It's just that I'm used to getting up really early to train and I didn't want to wake anyone, plus it never crossed my mind to leave a note seeing as usually I'd be with my Tachan to train. Seeing the conversation taking a sad turn, Sane decides to try to lighten the mood say Naruto-san what kind of training do you do? Maybe we could train together from now on. The red-haired boy smiles gratefully to the blonde girl as he responds, it's nothing to major, I do 20 laps, then after a 5 minute break for some water and to catch my breath, I do 50 each of push-ups sit-ups squats, jumping jacks and chin-ups. After that I work for an hour on shuriken and kunai throwing, and then finish up the last hour with chakra control training. I'm still working on the leaf sticking exercise. Even Itama and Amaya's eyes slightly widen at this as that's quite the workload for a four year old, and can only wonder why his father would start him with something like that. Sinead however pouts, you get to do chakra control training. That's not fair to Chan, Kaya Chan and Bat Chan said I have to wait until we start working on it in the academy. Naruto chuckles at this, well to be fair, my Kaya Chan started me on chakra control training right after I unlocked my chakra. According to her, because of my lineage, I have way more chakra than most kids my age. I think she said I have as much chakra as a chunin or something, so it's pretty important for me to work on controlling it. All the adults nod along to this especially Idama who decides to voice his thoughts, he's right Su-chan, being a full Uzumaki as he probably is means that his chakra levels are much higher than any other child, including yourself. The blonde girl turns to her father about to ask how he knows that however he's already anticipated the question, I know from experience. Being half Izumaki myself, I have larger than average chakra reserves, of course being half Senju makes them even slightly larger but helps me with control. When I was your age I had the chakra levels of a fresh genin, while everyone else in my age group had academy level chakra pools. The only non-Izumaki or Senju that I've ever known that had a lot of chakra as a kid was the third Hokage. Mayo nods along to this, remembering how much chakra the 23-year-old had even as a child of 8 however she shakes her head and clears her throat, enough of this discussion. Tsunade-chan since Naruto-kun is now a member of this household if you wish it and he agrees he can start helping you to learn chakra control training. The blonde beams at this and turns to the younger redhead who only smiles slightly and nods his head, 
which causes her to get excited and hug him tightly saying over and over again, thank you thank you thank you. All he can do is slightly blush from the contact, and pat her back. The adults all laugh at the two children, however Tsunade eventually lets go of Naruto, and goes back to eating allowing the red head to do the same. Once breakfast is done Mito stands up and turns to the two children Naruto-kun, Tsunade-chan go get on your sandals, the three of us are going into the village to go shopping. Naruto-kun needs more clothes as even though Inama-chan's old clothes fit him okay, I don't want him to dress in his hand-me-downs. Also we need to get Naruto-kun the standard sets of training kunai shuriken senbon and ninja wire. Tsunade immediately heads for the door to put on her sandals, however Naruto looks shyly at the older red head. He rubs the back of his head and asks, say Mito Oba can we maybe also pick up some wrist and ankle weights? I'd like to use them for training to help increase my strength and speed. I'd heard my Tachan talking once about how weights would help me to get stronger without keeping me from growing. Mito is surprised by his request, but internally nods to his father's foresight, of course we can Naruto-kun. That's a very good idea, and in fact I think I'll pick up an extra set for Tsunade-chan. Tell me Naruto-kun did your parents begin to teach you any Taijutsu style? The younger redhead shakes his head, no, though Tachan did show me his own style, he called it Dragon Fist Ryukin. He said his style might not suit me, and that he had a little knowledge on other styles that he'd teach me next year. The woman nods along to this and comes up with an idea, okay well Tsunade-chan is already being trained in the Senju style Taijutsu by her father. Most of the kids at the academy are either learning the academy style or have begun learning their clan's style if they have one. I'll take you into the Senju archives later and we'll find you a Taijutsu style to learn okay. The boy nods his head to this and then the two head over to the door to put on their sandals, finding an impatiently waiting Senate, and after apologizing to her they head out the door. They spend most of the afternoon going from shop to shop. At the clothing store Naruto finds an outfit that he likes, retaining the red kimono shirt and orange sash but making the shirt blood red color to match his hair and adding the Uzumaki swirl to the back in white. He trades out the gray pants for dark red ones, as well as changing his white sandals for black, and he gets multiple sets of this outfit. At the Shinobi supply store he gets two holsters, two sets each of practice kunai, shuriken and senbon, as well as three spools of ninja wire. Mido also buys two sets of ankle and wrist weights with the initial weight of the wrists being 5 pounds each and the ankles being 10 pounds each. After their shopping is done they head to a small restaurant for lunch, at which point Mito explains to Tsunade why she got the two sets of weights and hands one set to her granddaughter. After lunch they head back to the house, and when they arrive Amaya greets them with a slightly sad face, which concerns Tsunade and Mito the second of which asks what's wrong Amaya-chan. The blonde woman sighs as she answers her mother-in-law, Idama is leaving on another mission. He promised me that he'd be home for a week after he got back from the last one, and it's only been three days. We got into an argument and he said that it was his duty as the son of the first Hokage to show the strength of the Senju clan. Mito shakes her head at this and pats the woman on the shoulder, he's so much like both his father and his uncle. However instead of standing here sulking you should take Tsunade-chan, and the three of you should spend as much time together as possible till he leaves for the mission. I'll have a discussion with Sari-chan about not giving Inama any more missions for a month after he returns from this one. Amaya smiles gratefully to her for her words and takes Tsunade by the hand and leads her up to she and Itama's room to do just that. Mito then turns to Naruto, alright Naruto-kun I'll take you to the basement now. That is where the Senju clan archives are at although it's really just a big library filled with many scrolls on Tai, Nin, Gen, Ken, and even some Fuenjutsu. The two redheads go down to the basement, where Mito proceeds to take out a kunai and cuts her finger with it taking the bleeding digit, and swiping it across the door, which then proceeds to glow as seals spread over it, then there's a click and the glow recedes. Mito smiles and opens the door leading him inside, what you just witnessed Naruto-kun is a piece of our clan's specialty Fuenjutsu, moreover that was a blood seal. You will of course be learning how to create blood seals, but not for a long time. Anyway the scrolls are arranged by type, and the Taijutsu scrolls are second shelf on the left. Naruto heads over to the Taijutsu shelf, and begins to browse through the styles there. After looking for a while he suddenly feels a pull towards a specific scroll, 
The scroll in question is blue in color with a picture of stars making up the Big Dipper, and the kanji on the front of it reads Hukuto Shin Ken Big Dipper God Fist. As he reads the information on the style he begins to smile more and more, until eventually he's sold he rolls it back up and heads over to Mito, I found it. The perfect style for me to learn. He presents the scroll to her and when she sees which one it is she gasps, as the style he wants to learn is said to come from before the time of the Sage of the Six Paths, and originated in a foreign land, and was said to be the strongest martial art ever. She shakes it off and smiles at him, well you certainly shoot for the stars don't you Naruto-kun? Well then you may have that scroll, and learn from it. Now let's head back upstairs, and get ready for dinner. He nods his head and with that they head back up to the main floor, and as they do he finally gets the memories from his clones. At dinner that night they discuss plans for tomorrow, including Naruto's first day in the academy, and then afterwards go to bed. Leaf Academy? Next day. The Leaf Village Academy is a large building painted in reds, on on the front of it is the kanji for fire. As the new school week begins you can find children of all ages milling about outside along with their parents, awaiting for the teachers to open the doors. However standing away from all the happy families are two boys, the first leans against the tree in the front of the building. He's a tall boy for his age, standing at 3'9", he has spiky white hair with dark eyes, and he has red lines under the corners of his eyes, and has slightly tan skin. His name is Drea, an orphan raised in the orphanage. The second boy is leaning against the side of the building. He is normal height for a boy his age, standing 3'6", has long straight black hair which goes down to the middle of his back. He has pale skin and slightly delicate features, however the most striking thing about him are his eyes, they are a golden color with slits for the pupils, and around the eyes is what appears to be purple makeup which extends part way to either side of his nose. His name is Orochimaru Hebi, who was recently orphaned when his parents died during a mission. Suddenly the two boys' attention is taken by the fact that everyone becomes silent and stares in one direction. When they to look that way they see why the Senju family have appeared, however this time they have an extra person a boy with short spiky red hair and blue eyes with slightly tan skin, wearing an all dark red outfit. While most can only wonder at who the boy is Drea and Orochimaru each have differing thoughts upon seeing him Drea thinks, TCH another pretty boy, and he's probably a jerk like Oraki Tem. While Orochimaru thinks, he looks strong. Perhaps he'll finally be someone I can test myself against. Everyone begins to talk quietly about who the boy could possibly be, and why he's with Mito Sama and her family. Soon enough though the doors open and a couple tune in come out and direct the children inside. Naruto bids farewell to Mito and Amaya as Tsune grabs him by the wrist and drags him inside and to her classroom, leaving the two women to laugh. When they reach the classroom they find the teacher sitting there waiting and greeting all the students as they enter when he sees Tsune and Naruto he smiles slightly. The teacher is an average sized man, standing at 5'9 with mousy brown hair and grey eyes. He wears the standard attire for a chunin which consists of an all blue shinobi outfit and some grey armor over his chest and back. The man's name is Ikyu's Hachibana and he's a 35 year old veteran ninja. He looks down at the children, Sanade san please head inside and take your seat. You young man must be the new student I was told about. Sanade smiles at her friend and heads inside as Naruto nods his head to the teacher who continues, now I've been informed that you are a member of the Uzumaki clan and your unique situation. Know that I will not allow any kind of disruptions in my classroom, and I don't care what clan you're from or who you're related to, in my eyes you're just another student. Understand? The redhead nods in agreement, understood sensei. Trust me, I'm not here to play around, I've come to learn to the be the best shinobi I can be. His response makes the man smirk as remarks, good. My name is Ikyu's Hachibana, but you can call me Ikyu's Sensei. Now class is about to begin, I'll call you inside in a few moments, and you can introduce yourself to the class. He heads inside and Naruto hears him telling the class to settle down as he takes roll call then makes an announcement, alright class before we begin we have a new student joining us today. Please do your best to give him a warm welcome. Come in. With that the red head takes a deep breath and exhales it then he opens the door and walks inside the class. Immediately his eyes scan the class to see if he can find any faces he recognizes besides Tsunade, 
and he finds both Drea and Orochimaru who are on opposite sides of the room and both looking at him intently. Then he catches a face which looks familiar with a head of spiky silver hair and immediately knows that's Kakashi's father Sakamo Hatake, as only a Hatake could have hair like that. He walks up in front of the teacher's podium and smiles and waves shyly at everyone as Ikkyu says, now introduce yourself, just your name likes, dislikes, and dreams for the future. The redhead nods and looks at the class as he does as instructed, hello my name is Naruto Izumaki. My likes are ramen, learning new things, training and gardening. My dislikes are perverts, the three minutes it takes for the water to boil for ramen, and anyone who puts another down. My dreams for the future are to be a great shinobi, bring everlasting peace to the elemental nations, and to have a family. Everyone has different reactions, all the girls besides Tsunade and one dark-haired one swoon at his dream of having a family. Most of the boys think his dream of everlasting peace in the elemental nations is stupid, all except Drea, Sakamo, and Orochimaru. After a few seconds, Iq speaks up again, Alright thank you for that Naruto-san. Why don't you have a seat next to Sakamo? With that he points to the boy in question who is sitting in the middle section, third row, and Naruto nods and heads up there taking the empty seat to the left of the silver-haired boy. Thus begins his second stint in the academy. Six months later. It's now been six months since Naruto came back in time, six months since he became part of the of the Senju family, and six months since he joined the academy, and it's been a hectic six months, he's been training like crazy. Every day he gets up at 5 a.m., goes to the forest of death, creates as many clones as he can which is now 100 he then has them break up into groups of 10 to practice different things. The first group always works on chakra control, which they are now up to tree walking as they master leaf sticking the second group works on shuriken jutsu improving his aim the third group works on the first of the basic three the substitution jutsu kawarmi no jutsu the fourth works on the transformation jutsu henge no jutsu the fifth group works on the last the normal clone jutsu bushin no jutsu the last five groups have been working on new skills the sixth group has been working on the body flicker jutsu shunshin no jutsu which is a high speed movement technique the seventh and eighth groups have been working on the beginning stances of the Big Dipper God Fist, which has been going incredibly well. The ninth group has been learning all about human anatomy to help with his Teijutsu style, while the tenth and final group has been working on the Fuinjutsu that Maito started to teach him two months ago. As far as his physical exercise goes, he's getting more and more fit especially with the weights on his ankles and wrists, which are now up to 10 pounds on each wrist and 20 pounds on each ankle and he now does physical training with Sinead in the mornings. As far as the academy goes, he's quickly gotten to the top of the class, and has been classified as a genius alongside his new friend Sakamo, as well as Orochimaru. That's another thing he's made friends with a few people in his class besides Sinead, the first of which is Sakamo Hatake and he's found the boy to be a lot more sociable than his future son, they even spar outside of the academy sometimes. The second person he's made friends with is Drea who became his friend after he defended the boy from some bullies who were calling him dead last due to his terrible grades and his lacking skills in every ninja field. Ever since the two have been great friends, and the redhead has even been helping the white-haired boy with his shuriken jutsu and the basic three. He's also become associated with Orochimaru, who sees him as a sort of rival, but has yet to take the step forward to becoming his friend, preferring to study and train alone. But he's made it his mission to break the young Sanin to be of that, thinking that if he can be a positive influence on the boy then he won't become a crazy pedophile in the future. Another development in his new life is that it was recently learned that the Senju family will be growing by one more member, as Amaya is four months pregnant. Tanade upon finding out she was going to be a big sister was ecstatic, saying that she was going to protect her little brother or sister from any and everything that would harm them. Naruto just congratulated Idama and Amaya on their news while going back to his calligraphy practice which was a prerequisite to learn Fuinjutsu. As a result of Amaya's pregnancy Idama decided stop taking missions for a while instead taking up a job in the torture and interrogation division, also giving him more time to train Sinead and help Naruto with refining his new Teijutsu style against a superior opponent. But today will be different as today Naruto and the rest of the class will begin training in their elemental affinities but for the redhead he'll start learning how to properly use his bloodlines after today. Leaf Academy? It uses classroom. The veteran shinobi looks at his class, and can't help but to think about how much they've grown in the last six months, 
which is why he has no problem with starting them on today's lesson. He clears his throat getting everyone's attention as he speaks, all right class today, we'll be learning something entirely new. Now as you all know we've been teaching you all three basic jutsu those being the substitution transformation and clone. Now those were to prepare you for more advanced techniques, and today is the true start of learning those more advanced techniques. As he looks around he sees that he has every one of their attention, and smirks internally at it. He proceeds to take out two stacks of papers and continues today we will be testing your elemental affinities. Now each ninja in the world is aligned to a specific elemental nature, which makes using jutsu of that element easier and jutsu of opposing elements harder. This paper I have here is called chakra paper, and each of you will be receiving a piece, what it does it tells you your affinity. Now pay close attention to what I say next as I don't want to repeat myself. Everyone replies in unison, yes, Ikyu sensei. He then goes into what Naruto has dubbed his Uruka mode and starts to lecture. Now each of the five elements does something different to this paper. If your affinity is fire it will burn to ash. If your affinity is water it will get wet and turn soggy. If your affinity is earth it will crumble and turn to dust. If it is lightning it will crinkle up into a ball. Finally if it is wind the paper will split down the middle. He then takes one piece into his dominate hand which is his left, and puts it between his fingers, all you do is you place the paper between two finger of you dominant hand, and channel your chakra to it, and it will tell you what your affinity is. After saying this he does just that and the paper burns down to ash showing that he has a fire affinity, which causes all the now 5 year olds to stare in awe before they start to talk excitedly about what their affinities could be. He stomps on the floor to get them quiet, alright when I call your name come up here, take a piece of paper and channel your chakra. At that point he begins to call names and Naruto doesn't really pay any attention to most of them as most of them get either fire water or earth, however he pays attention when his friends are called first of which is Sakamo Hatake. The silver haired boy walks down the aisle and up to the teacher, taking his piece of chakra paper he places it between the fingers of his right hand and applies his chakra and surprisingly it crinkles up into a ball and emits sparks. Ikyu's whistles at this, well looks like we got our first special case. You have a lightning affinity, and from the looks of it a strong one. Congrats Sakamo-san. Sakamo nods gratefully to the man and heads back to his seat with a smile on his face. The next person Naruto pays attention to is right after Sakamo, Orochimaru Heavy. As the pale loner makes his way down to the instructor and does as everyone else did, however his is shocking too as when he channels his chakra to the paper it splits in half. Ikyu shakes his head at this damn two for two on the prodigies and their affinities. You have a wind affinity Orochimaru-san, which for the land of fire is incredibly rare. I've no doubt you'll be a powerful shinobi in the future. Orochimaru smirks at this as he heads back to his seat, and Naruto once again tones out Ikyu's sensei that is until he hears another friendly name called, Drea No Name. He watches as the white-haired boy scowls at the addition of No Name to his first name, but still heads up to the teacher to take his paper. When he does his paper burns to ash showing he has a fire affinity, and after tossing away the remaining ash he heads back to his seat. A few minutes later he hears Tsunade's name called and pays close attention to see what her elemental affinity is. The blonde haired girl excitedly takes the paper, hoping to have the same two main affinities of her grandfather water and earth, so that she might also have inherited his wood release bloodline. However she is disappointed when the paper in her hand crinkles up into a ball, indicating her main affinity is to lightning. She scowls at the paper and tosses it in the trash as she turns on her heels, and head back to her desk, pouting. After that Naruto just tunes out the names again, thinking about the basic storage seal he was taught by Mito and how to improve it, he just barely manages to tune back in when he hears the name Izumi Uchiha seeing as Uchiha comes before Izumaki. The girl in question has the usual black hair, and onyx eyes of the Uchiha clan however her hair goes down to her mid back, and she has a kinder looks to her face than most Uchiha. Izumi takes the chakra paper and channels her chakra and unsurprisingly she gets a fire affinity, seeing as most Achiha have it, though she seems disappointed she does maybe she was expecting a different result. After she gets back to her seat he finally hears it, Naruto, Izumaki you're up. At this he smiles and hops out of his seat, making his way excitedly down to the front of the classroom. 
When he reaches the front he excitedly takes the paper and places it between the pointer and middle fingers of his right hand and channels his chakra. What happens next shocks everyone, even the usually stoic accuse. His chakra paper cuts into four pieces and each piece does something different, one gets soggy one burns to ash on crumbles to dust, and the last crinkles up and emits sparks. Internally the red head laughs at the faces everyone is making however outside he tilts his head to the side confusedly and asks did I do something wrong sensei? What does this mean? The man quickly coughs into his hand to regain his composure and answers, no you didn't do anything wrong Naruto-san. It's just that I've never seen something like this before. What that means is that you have a main affinity to all five of the elements. You are without a doubt going to be a powerhouse when you're older. You can take your seat now. Naruto nods his head and heads back to his seat and chuckles at the unbelieving face his friend Sakamo is making. After that class goes by as normal, even though most are wondering how the red head got an affinity to all five major elements. After the academy lets out with Ikkyu's telling them that they'll all be given E-rank jutsu of their elements to learn for then next six months starting tomorrow, Naruto heads home with Sinead. However when they get to the house they find Mito waiting out front, but standing next to her is Hiruzen Sarutobi wearing his official Hokage robes and hat, which causes the red head to tense up slightly. Sinead however greets the adults with sourly Heibachan, Saru Jaisen. Noticing this Mito looks concerned and asks, What's wrong Sine chan Why do you look so sad? The little blonde pouts as she explains, We had our elemental affinities tested today, and I have a lightning affinity. Blinking at this the red-haired woman gives her granddaughter a confused look, What's so bad about having a lightning affinity? Sine sighs, I wanted to have the same affinities as Hashi Jiji. I wanted to be able to use wood release like him and prove that I'm worthy to carry on his legacy. Sarutobi kneels down and takes her by the shoulders at that Sine-chan, you don't have to have Hashirama Sensei's bloodline to continue his legacy. You are his legacy. You carry his blood and his will of fire. Never forget that young lady. This makes her feel much better as she rushes inside, leaving the two adults with Naruto, who upon seeing their looks chuckles nervously. One year later. Forest of Death. It's now been a year since the revelation that Naruto has all five major elements that day when he got home he had a conversation with Sarutobi and Mito who were both wondering how he managed it. However he stuck to his innocent act and told them he had no clue, and that he didn't know what elements his parents had as they had never used elemental jutsu in front of him before they died. Sarutobi then offered to allow him to graduate early so that he could get a jump on learning to harness his elements, and what not but he declined stating that he'd like to graduate with his friends, something with the 24-year-old understood. Over the last year Naruto and his friends have all gotten taller and stronger. It's now a three-way tie between Naruto, Sakamo, and Orochimaru for Rookie of the Year, while Drea despite Naruto's help is still the dead last although that's only because his Teijutsu is abysmal, and he can't make a bushing to save his life. Tsunade is by far the strongest Kunoichi in the class, and unknown to the red head has begun to develop a crush for him due to his kind nature and drive to improve himself, also because of how he is with her baby brother. That's another thing about 8 months ago Amaya gave birth to a healthy baby boy with tufts of light brown hair and his mother's green eyes, they named him Nawaki Senju. Today is a break day from the academy and Naruto can be found in his usual clearing in the forest of death, having left behind a strengthened shadow clone at the Senju house so as to keep them from being suspicious. The red head takes a breath as he prepares to begin the next phase of his training, which is learning how to actually use the three bloodlines given to him by the tailed beasts. He takes a breath, makes the cross-shaped seal and calls out multi-shadow clone jutsu. In a puff of smoke 200 clones appear, another great thing about the year is that his reserves have gone back up to Anu level. He decides to hand out his orders, alright guys break up into groups of 20. First group continue chakra control, combine the water walking exercise with the leaf and kunai balancing exercises. The first group salutes and heads over to the river to do just that. He turns to the second group, group 2 work on the stances for that kenjutsu style I found in the senju archives. Group 3 are on the next kata for the hukuto shinkan. The second and third group move off in different directions to do as they're told. 
The Kenjutsu style Naruto is referring to is called Haiten Mitsuruji Ryu Flying Heaven Governed Sword style, and is another ancient style he found in the Senju archives after taking an interest in Kenjutsu six months ago thanks to his friendship with Sakamo. He turns to the next two groups. Group 4 you get to read the intermediate anatomy books. Group 5 your job is to work on the new seals Mido Obeson taught me. With their orders in place they go to do as told even though the fourth group groans about having to read. He turns to the next groups. Group 6 and 7 your job is to split into four groups of 10. Each subgroup is to work on earth, fire, wind and water nature training using leaves. The two groups salute him and move off to do their jobs. He turns to the last three groups, all right groups 8, 9, and 10 your job is to begin training in our bloodlines. Group 8 you got magnet release, group 9 lava release and group 10 boil release. Get to it boys. The three groups of clones move off to start their training, grousing about lazy ass originals. Naruto himself kneels to the ground and takes out a storage scroll, releasing weighted metal plates from on seal within it and proceeds to add one more plate each to his wrist and ankle weights. Doing this increases their weight to 50 pounds per wrist and 60 pounds per ankle after which he reseals the remaining plates and puts away the scroll and begins to do his daily exercises, which have also increased to 50 laps 100 each of push-ups, sit-ups, squats, jumping jacks and chin-ups. Because of his workouts and a healthy diet he's much taller and better fit than he was the last time he was 6 years old, now standing at 4'1 making him one of the tallest of his class just below Drea who now stands at 4'3. After his physical training has done he checks the time to see that he has only a few minutes to get home from breakfast so he body flickers from the forest and appears in his room after a few jumps where his clone is already waiting for him and it looks as sweaty as himself he dispels it and heads to the shower. While he's getting himself clean he can tea help but think about how graduation is only another two months away and wonders who his teammates will be and who their Jonin sensei will end up being. When he finishes and gets dressed he heads downstairs for the usual family breakfast, as he enters he finds that only Amaya and little Nawaki are already present. He smiles at them, good morning Amaya-chan, and a special good morning to you Nawaki-kun. He tickles the baby's tummy getting him to laugh and clap his hands as the blonde woman smiles at him, good morning Naruto-kun, did you have a good training session with Sane-chan and Tama-kun? The redhead nods, sure did. Though Sine-chan still can't keep up with me, although she comes pretty close, must be her quarter is Amaki heritage. Amaya just giggles at this, and a moment later said girl comes walking in. Sine has changed only a little in the nearly two years he's been living with them. She's grown taller standing now at 3'9", with a slender build for her age due to her training. Her hair is now kept up into a single high ponytail, and she now dons a light green short skirt kimono tied tightly at the waist with a dark blue OB. The skirt has a slit in the left leg for ease of movement. Also you can see a hint of mesh under armor over her chest. On her wrists and forearms is red arm warmers which covers her wrist weights her feet are bare right now, but she has bandages wrapped around her ankles and halfway up her shins which cover her ankle weights. All in all he can definitely see hints of her future beauty in her features now. Seeing him staring at her she blushes slightly, but decides to mess with him, see something you like Naru Takun. The redhead realizing he was staring blushes, and shakes his head, sorry Sine chan I was just thinking how much you've grown since we became friends. The blonde smiles at this and responds in kind you've grown to Naruto-kun. I don't care what anyone says to me you're the best shinobi in the academy. Orochimaru and Sakamo are second best compared to you. Naruto nods his head in thanks as they take their usual seats at the table to eat, and a moment later Idama and Mido enter and breakfast begins. After breakfast Idama looks at the two kids, Hey Su-chan, Naruto-kun how about we have a spar? The two of you against me. The blonde nods her head excitedly while the red head smirk confidently, you think you can take Sine-chan and I together old man. After all we are the best male and female student in the academy. The brown-haired man laughs loudly at this, ha 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 ha. Confidence, I like that, after all I'd expect nothing less of an Izumaki. Don't worry about me kiddo, I'll be fine after all I received private instruction from two Hokages, as well as an Izumaki seal mistress. Let's head out back. The three proceed to head out to the training grounds out back which is within sight of the back porch. The two six-year-olds stand across from the thirty-year-old man, as they all proceed to get into their Teijutsu stances. 
Sinead and her father both take the stance for the Senju style Taijutsu called 1000 Branch Fist Senen Shibuken, which is a style that revolves around overwhelming your opponents with powerful and unpredictable strikes. Naruto, however, takes the stance for the Hukuto Shin Ken. He takes a strong stance with his legs spread apart and bent with his left leg leading his right. His hands are positioned in a specific way, with his right hand down low near his right thigh, and his left hand held up high in the air, and both are open pawn. At an unseen signal the two academy students and the Jonin shinobi rush each other, and begin their spar. Leaf Academy? Two months later. Graduation Day. The day has finally arrived, today is the day that the students will take their first step to becoming real ninja and become genin. Everyone arrived early for the tests, and have been chomping at the bit for it to be over. The first part of the graduation exam was a written test which had 20 questions that were meant to test their tactical thinking as well as their knowledge of history. The second part of the exam was shuriken and kunai throwing, in that test you got 10 kunai and 10 shuriken and each hit of the bullseye for the kunai was worth 10 points, while the each hit of vital spots on the straw dummies for the shuriken was worth 10 points each. On that test most of the civilian born got a 60 100s for both, which is just passing for the kunai and shuriken however the ones who did better were the clan kids who got 70, or 80 100s on kunai throwing and 70 100s on the shuriken. Only two kunoichi got more Tsunei got 90 100s on both while Izumi Uchiha got 85 100s on kunai as one of her kunai was an inch to the left of the bullseye, while she got 90 100s on the shuriken. After that Drea ended up getting 85s on both showing his improvement. Then the three geniuses all got 100 100s on both kunai and shuriken although Naruto had to show off and throw all his kunai and shuriken at once blindfolded. The third test was a teijutsu spar with a chunin. The rules were that you had to last at least two minuets to pass and if you could last the full five without being code or knocked out of the ring then you'd get a 100 for the test. Most of the civilian born kids just barely lasted the two minutes before being defeated. The clan children each lasted three minutes before being forced out of the ring or forfeiting. Tsunade went against Ikkyus himself and lasted four minuets and 25 seconds against him before he defeated her, while her rival Izumi lasted four minuets and 15 seconds against a Chunin Kunoichi. Then Drea got his chance and actually lasted 3 minutes and 50 seconds using the academy style before being knocked out by his Chunin opponent. Once again Naruto, Sakamo, and Orochimaru excelled in this test. The first one of the three to go was Sakamo who managed to last the full five minuets, and even managed to get his opponent down to his knees. After Sakamo was Orochimaru who also lasted the full 5 minuets and even managed to beat his opponent at the last second by forcing him out of the ring. Naruto was last as usual and he unsurprisingly lasted the full 5 minuets against Ikkyu Sensei, but he used his Hukuto Shin Ken and hit the pressure points in the man's left arm, right leg, and spine to bring him make it so that he couldn't fight anymore until the damage was reversed. When it was over the red head reversed what he did on the teacher gaining the man's gratitude, and was told that his style was going to be dangerous when perfected. Now they were waiting on the final test which is the ninjutsu portion. From what he's heard the ninjutsu test consists of the basic three, as well as an E and D rank elemental jutsu. Eventually Ikkyu sensei begins to call names to come to the back room, and one by one nearly every person comes back in wearing a shiny new blue or black headbands, of course one or two of the civilian kids fail, and don't get their headbands. All of the clan kids come back out wearing headbands, some over their forehead, others around their necks or arms. Naruto really pays attention when his friends are called. Tsunade goes inside and nails the ninjutsu portion, first she substitutes with a fern in the corner then she transforms into her grandmother, after that she makes two perfect clones, and then body flickers from one side of the room to the other leaving behind leaves. For her E-rank lightning jutsu she uses the lightning release static strings jutsu Rayton Seiki Suji no jutsu to create strings of electricity that connect to a practice dummy and delivers small shocks to it. Then for her D-rank lightning jutsu she uses lightning release, lightning bolt jutsu Rayton Rekurai no jutsu, which she makes the hand signs and releases a short bolt of lightning from her hand which strikes the dummy and leaving electrical burns on its chest. Due to her perfect execution she receives her headband which she asks for a green cloth and ties it around her head proudly. As soon as she walks out with her protector Naruto smiles proudly at her, 
causing her cheeks to heat up as she heads back to her seat. The next of his friends to go inside is actually Drea, and the white-haired boy looks nervous as heck. Drea once inside performs the substitution with a chair then transforms into a perfect copy of the third Hokage. He just manages to create two usable clones and body flickers about 100 feet, which is the least amount required to pass. Then for his E-rank fire jutsu he uses the fire release, burning leaf jutsu katan, tensha rifu no jutsu in which he creates a small amount of burning leaves in his mouth and spits them out at the test dummy causing minor irritation to the eyes and chest. Finally for his D-rank he uses fire release, flash fan jutsu katan senko ukyo no jutsu, which allows him to take in a fair amount of air while making three hand signs, and then breath it out in a short funnel of flames which lasts only a couple of seconds in a V-shaped wave which causes light burns to the dummy. When he's done he receives his headband and walks out proudly, giving Naruto a thumbs up to show that his remedial lessons really helped out. Next is Orochimaru who as usual is calm. He performs the first four techniques perfectly going so far as to transform into a perfect reflection of his dead father. For his E-rank wind jutsu he uses the wind release, wind clone jutsu futon, K's bush in no jutsu, which allows him to create a clone of himself made of wind which he makes attack a dummy and it dispels right after in a gust of wind. For his D-rank jutsu he uses the wind release, projectile deflection blast futon has a tie to whammy bakuatsu, which allows him to build up a lot of air in his chest and the release it as a gust from his mouth strong enough to push back the dummy. Once he's done he to gains his headband which he ties around his left arm, and walks back into the classroom and quietly takes his seat. After that is Sakamo who performs the first four perfectly, then for his E-rank lightning jutsu he uses lightning release, lightning clone jutsu Reitan Reiku Bushin no jutsu which allows him to create a solid clone made of lightning chakra. The clone the proceeds to attack the dummy and each strike delivers shocks and then it dispels itself. For his D-rank he uses lightning release, electron jutsu Reitan Denshi no jutsu, which after the hand signs are complete creates a crackling, sparking sphere of electricity in his hands which he tosses at the dummy and when it hits it electrocutes it. Sakamo comes out wearing his headband the normal way which just makes his spiky hair even spikier. The last one to get Naruto's attention is of course the second best kunoichi of the class, Izumi Achiha who looks nearly as confident as Tsunade did before her. Izumi like all the rest performs the four basic techniques perfectly. For her E-rank she uses the fire release, finger flame jutsu katan, shushi hano no jutsu, which allows her to channel fire chakra to her finger and create a small ball of flame over it which she uses to carve the word idiot into the dummy. For her D-rank she uses the fire release, flame knife jutsu katan hano nefu no jutsu for this technique she takes out a kunai and channels fire chakra into it lighting on fire, but leaving it unharmed, and then she throws it at the dummy and it cuts right through it. Izumi exits the room wearing her headband as a hairband tying it around her hair. Then Ikyus finally calls out, Naruto is a maki. The red head stands up to head into the back, However he hears his friends all call out to him first Tsunade, you can do it Naruto-kun. Then Sakamo gives him a thumbs up, crush it Naruto. Andrea crosses his arms, show up Oraki Tem. Naruto just smiles at all his friends one last time before walking into the back room. Once inside he finds himself standing in front of Ikyu sensei and two other Chunin instructors, as the man who has taught him for the last near two years addresses him, alright Naruto-san for starters you need to demonstrate the substitution, then the transformation, then the clone jutsu, and finally the body flicker. When that's done since you have five elements we'll need you to demonstrate one jutsu of each of them. The redhead nods at this but asks say sensei if I performed a different clone technique for the first portion like say the earth release shadow clone dotan cage bushin could that count towards my clone jutsu and one of my elemental jutsu. Ikyus and the other two tune in blink at this before conversing together quietly for a moment. After their conversation is done Ikyus turns back to Naruto, we've come to the decision to allow it. The point is to make sure you make clones, no matter what kind they are. The boy nods his head and proceed to begin the test as he first substitutes with one of the instructors before switching back, then he transforms into a perfect copy of the first Hokage, after that he performs the earth release shadow clone as he said, and creates two clones of himself made from mud. After he dispels the two clones they leave behind puddles of mud which he smiles apologetically for. Next he performs water release, gunshot sutan tepidama in which he makes a few hand signs and takes a breath as his chest swells 
and then he releases condensed balls of water from his mouth which move at high speed, hitting the dummy and puncturing holes into it. After the dummy is replaced with a new one he then performs fire release, fireball jutsikatan hidama in which after making the three hand signs he takes a breath and releases a medium sized ball of flames from his mouth which burn orange in color and set the dummy on fire instantly. After the chunin put the dummy out with water release, Naruto moves on to his fourth element reforming lightning release, lightning ball Reitan Reikia, in which he raises his hands over his head and creates a small ball of electricity between them. Then he brings his hands down tossing the ball at the dummy. When it hits it covers the dummy in a swirl of electricity causing electrical burns all over it. Then for his final jutsu he uses wind release, gale palm futon repusha, in which he first takes out a kunai and tosses it. Then he claps his hands and releases a gale of compressed winds which speed the weapon up and causes it to sink deep into the heart of the dummy. Once he finishes his last jutsu the instructors congratulate him and he takes a blue headband and puts it around his forehead just like old times. When he walks out of the room Ikkyuz is following behind him and as he makes up up to his desk Sakamo high fives him. The Chunin clears his throat to get everyone's attention, alright everyone first off, I want to say congratulations to all of those who graduated. You have taken your first steps on your road to becoming splendid shinobi and kunoichi. For those who failed, better luck next year. Now you have the next week off, but be back here at 10am sharp next Monday morning for your team assignments and to meet your jonin sensei. With that he dismisses them and everyone rushes out of the room however Naruto's friends gather around him as Sine hugs him. We did it Naruto-kun. We're one step closer to being real ninja. The redhead chuckles at the blonde and pats her back. We sure are Sine chan But next week we'll find out who our teachers for the foreseeable future will be. And I have this feeling that most of us will get someone powerful. Sakamo chuckles at that well, I just hope that I'm paired with you as a teammate Naruto. I think you and me together with a competent Kunoichi could be an unstoppable force. Drea shakes his head, in any case how about we all go out to celebrate our graduating. Pretty boy Hitake is buying. Naruto nods his head, alright sure that's so kind of you to buy everyone lunch Sakamo. Tsunade nods sagely as well, yes. You have a kind heart, Hitake-san. Said boy however just sits there with his mouth hanging open as he tries to formulate words. The redhead then notices Izumi and Orochimaru both by themselves and gets up and heads over to them first the Uchiha girl. When she notices him she looks at him confusedly, can I help you Izumaki-san? Naruto smiles softly at her and responds, just call me Naruto. I hate formality. No you can't help me, but perhaps I can help you. You see a bunch of us are going to lunch to celebrate graduating and I thought maybe you'd like to come along. Sakamo is buying. She proceeds to look at him incredulously, is this a pity offer? Because I don't need, nor want your pity. I may not be like others of my clan, but I am still proud to be an Achiha. The red head shakes his head, it has nothing to do with pity. Though, I will admit, there is another motive to my offer. The way I figure it is that we might get teamed up together, and it's better to start to get to know a potential teammate now rather than later. Besides everyone can use friends, even in Achiha. As she looks at him trying to detect any lies she finds none, only honesty, and so she give him a gentle smile well in that case then I would love to join you for a free meal. Naruto smiles at that good, head on over to the group and introduce yourself, I have one more person to talk to. With that he heads over towards the loner prodigy, while Izumi walks over to the little group and properly introduces herself to them. Naruto arrives at Orochimaru's desk just as the boy is getting up to leave and when he sees the red head he asks, what do you need Naruto-san? The red head looks at him seriously, you don't need to be alone Orochimaru. I know the pain you must be feeling deep down. Losing your parents at a young age, it's the kind of thing you never quite get over. My parents have been dead over two years, and I still haven't gotten over it. The pale boy looks at him surprised but quickly bows his head and hides his eyes behind his bangs, how do you do it? How can you be so cheerful despite the loss of your parents? Naruto pats his shoulder, you take it one day at a time, and you realize that no matter what your parents loved you, and they wouldn't want you to mourn their deaths forever. They would want you to live your life and make friends, keep moving forward, and have great adventures. That doesn't mean you should forget them, 
you can still remember all the good times just don't get stuck in the past, because that solves nothing. Orochimaru looks at him in astonishment, seeing the wisdom in his words and realizing that if his parents could see him now that his father would smack him upside the head and tell him to go play with other kids and have fun. With that in mind he smiles softly and nods his head to the red head. Thank you Naruto-san, I will try to take your advice. Naruto just smiles at him and responds, well you can start by joining me and the others for lunch, our fellow genius Sakamo is buying. The black-haired boy stands up and says three words, lead the way. With that the two geniuses rejoin the group and the now six genin leave the classroom heading for a barbecue restaurant, not noticing a cute smile at the scene as the man thinks to himself, I have the feeling that group is going to change the world in the future. I look forward to seeing where their paths take them. Chapter 3, Teams and True Test. Last time. With that in mind he smiles softly and nods his head to the red head, Thank you Naruto-san, I will try to take your advice. Naruto just smiles at him and responds, Well you can start by joining me and the others for lunch, our fellow genius Sakamo is buying. The black-haired boy stands up and says three words, lead the way. With that the two geniuses rejoin the group and the now six genin leave the classroom heading for a barbecue restaurant, not noticing a cute smile at the scene as the man thinks to himself, I have the feeling that group is going to change the world in the future. I look forward to seeing where their paths take them. Now. Leaf Academy. One week later, team assignment day. The week since graduation has gone by quickly. After leaving the academy that day, Naruto's group went to a barbecue restaurant owned by the Akimishi clan and had a nice lunch. Everyone talked and had a good time. Though there were funny moments like when Drea got into an argument with Orochimaru over a piece of pork and of course the funniest moment of all when the bill came and Sakamo was forced to pay it, causing the silver-haired boy to cry a river of tears over the loss of his allowance money. After that everyone went their separate ways promising to meet up again in a couple days for a group spar. When Naruto and Tsunade got home they were greeted to a party from the entire Senju clan to congratulate them for becoming Genin. Each received gifts from the main family members, for Tsunade she received a new kunai and shuriken holster from her parents, while Maido gave her a beginner scroll on medical ninjutsu written by Hashirama himself something which excited her a great deal. For Naruto though he received from Amaya a grey cargo vest lined with silver fur around the collar and the bottom when asked why she simply said, I thought it screamed Naruto. He thanked her kindly for it and slipped it on immediately. From Inama he received five scrolls of C-rank elemental techniques, one of each of the five main elements, along with it he got a joking warning, now don't go using those techniques to hurt people. However from Maito he received a new katana, the blade in question is approximately 28 inches in length the blade is made of chakra conductive metal and polished to a sheen. The tsubo is circular and takes the shape of the Uzumaki swirl, while the grip is wrapped in black colored cloth. The sheath is made of a strong wood and colored black as well, with images of red plum blossoms decorating it. He takes took it with reverence as Mido explains to him that the blade's name is Kuroheim Black Princess, and that it had once belonged to a samurai who had married into the Uzumaki clan, and was a master of his kenjutsu style Haiten Mitsuriji Ryu. That man's name was Kenshin Himura. Naruto thanked her with a hug for the sword, and said he would use it well. After that Naruto, and Sinead spent the rest of the week hanging out with everyone and getting to know the new additions to the group. In the course of the week the two girls of the group developed a friendship and mutual respect due to their shared wish to be great kunoichi. Now here they sit awaiting Ikyu sensei to enter the room and tell them who they'll be teamed with even though Naruto is already sure of one team for sure the future Sanin taught by Hiruz and Sartobi. After a few more minutes the brown haired man comes in and clears his throat to get everyone's attention for the last time, alright look alive everyone. Today you find out who you will be placed into three man squads with, and who your jonin sensei slash commander will be. Pay attention because if you miss your name, I'm not going to repeat myself. Everyone proceeds to pay attention at that as the man begins to call out team number and names. Naruto however does as he with Uruka in the future tunes him out as he takes out a scroll and some ink and begins to work on another seal taught to him by Mido, this time it's a basic barrier seal. After working on it for a little bit he tunes back in when he hears Ikyu say, Team 7 will consist of Orochimaru Hebi Tsunade Senju and Drea. Your sensei will be Hiruzen Saratobi. 
Hearing this, everyone responds differently. Most of the class can't believe that the Hokage, the man called the god of shinobi, is actually taking a team. Orochimaru is pleased by the announcement, knowing that he can learn to be a truly strong ninja under the third Hokage. Drea, while happy to be learning from the Hokage, is a little put off being teamed with Orochimaru and Tsunade, as he fears they'll make fun of him once they're away from his friend Naruto. Tsunade, however, is ecstatic that the man who was taught by both her grandfather and granduncle is going to be her teacher, plus it doesn't hurt that she's known him all her life. Ikyus quickly clears his throat, bringing order back to the class. Yes, I know it's shocking that Lord Third is taking a team, however, he believes that it's time for him to pass down what he knows to the next generation. Now, to continue, Team 8 will consist of. As he names of three more no name Genin and one more Jonin, then he reaches Team 9. Team 9 will consist of Sakamoha Take Izumi Uchiha and Naruto Izumaki. Your Jonin Sensei will be Danzo Shimura. Now that one surprises Naruto, don't get him wrong he's happy that he's being paired with his friend Sakamo as well as his new friend and second best Kunoichi in the class Izumi. No what surprises him is their sensei, the man referred throughout the elemental nations as the darkness of Shinobi Shinobi no Yami. The very same man who in the future had wanted to turn him into a weapon from the day Korama was sealed inside of him. He remembers that after Pin's invasion Sinead fell into a coma and Danzo was named at the 6th Hokage candidate Rokudaim Hokage Koho. Danzo was the man who had run a secret division of Andu Loyal only to himself called Root, and had wanted the Land of Fire to rule all the elemental nations. The man had gone so far as to have his right arm replaced with one made from the cells of the first Hokage, and then implanted with multiple pairs of Sharingan. The man had ended up being killed by Naruto's wayward teammate Sasuke Uchiha, after a prolonged battle, which if memory served included Danzo summoning some kind of animal. He shakes off his memories and realizes that this Danzo has not yet become the one he remembers, and if he goes about it right might never become that man completely. Plus Danzo is supposed to be the second strongest guy man in the village right now after Sarutobi seeing as they grew up rivals, meaning that he's at least an s rank shinobi. He's brought out of his thoughts by Sakamo clapping him on the shoulder. How about that Naruto? Looks like we're teammates, and our third member is Izumi-san. The redhead smiles at his friends, yeah it's great. Also from what I've heard our sensei is pretty strong. The silver haired boy gives him a confused look however they both pay attention to Ikyu's again. The man finishes naming off the teams and says, alright those are all the teams. Your jonin sensei will be here to pick you up soon so until they do why don't you all sit with your teammates and get to know them. It's been my pleasure to be your instructor for the last two years and I look forward to watching each of your careers. With that he turns and walks out of the room, leaving the genin to rearrange themselves into their teams. The third person who usually sits at the same desk as Sakamo and Naruto gets up and moves, and Izumi comes over and takes a seat. The Achiha girl smiles at her male friends, looks like your insights were correct Naruto, we've been teamed together. So what were you two boys talking about? Naruto smiles at her while Sakamo has a contemplative look and responds. Naruto was saying that our Jonin sensei is strong and I was about to ask him how he knows that. The redhead smirks at this, well since I live with the wife of the first Hokage, I've met a lot of people over the last two years. Chief among those is the third Hokage, his teammates Homura-san and Kohari-san. All three of them have mentioned Danzo Shimura before, according to Hiruzen Ni the man is the second strongest ninja in the village after himself. As he puts it Danzo is easily an s rank shinobi he's smart, cold, calm and collected. Izumi nods along to this, I've also heard of Danzo Shimura. My cousin Kagami Uchiha was his teammate as Genin and still goes on missions with the man at times and he always speaks highly of his skills as a ninja. Sakamo takes a thinking pose at this, so what you two are saying is that we're going to be learning under a man nearly as strong as the third? They both nod their heads in response which causes him to smile slightly good then that means we won't be falling behind our friends who are trained by Lord Hokage. The other two chuckle at this as they all fall into an easy conversation. Over the next two hours each team sensei comes in and takes them away, until the only ones left are team 7 and 9. The two teams come to the agreement to sit in the same section when Sinead brings up an interesting topic do you guys think that Hiruzen-sensei and Danzo-sensei will have us do joint training sessions and joint missions? 
However, before any of them can answer Tsunade and Naruto hear a very familiar voice respond, that's a very good question Tsunade chan The answer to that is there is a good possibility of joint missions, not sure about joint training sessions. What do you think Danzo? The sixth genin turned to see that standing in the doorway are two men. The first is easily recognizable to all of them as his face is carved upon the Hokage mountain, as well as the fact that he gave a speech on their first day of the academy. Here is Ansaratobi, the third Hokage of the Leaf, the god of Shinobi has changed very little in the last two years, he is now 25 years old the lines under his eyes are a bit more defined and slightly longer his hair is still spiky, and his goatee is still short. Today he's wearing a casual black outfit, black pants tucked into mesh armor over the shins a black long sleeve kimono shirt with the end of the sleeves tucked into mesh armor over the forearms and white around the color under the shirt is mesh armor as well. The second man however is new to every one of them he's a handsome man with a serious face, there's an x-shaped scar on his chin, he has shaggy black hair which reaches eye level, his eyes are brown, and sharp making him look a little like a hawk. He wears a black bodysuit with wrist and shin guards, and his headband is tied around his head as it should be. He's also only slightly taller than Saratobi, standing at 5'8". This man is Danzo Shimura, the darkness of Shinobi, and Team 9's new sensei. The 25-year-old, S-rank Shinobi grunts a little, I think that our teams would benefit from sparring and training together once a month here is as for joint missions it is inevitable that the two teams will place together for certain missions as you cannot take your team out of the village being that you are the Hokage. Of course rather, or not they will be our teams remains to be seen. With that he turns to the 6th genin, team 9 meet me at training ground 9 in 5 minuets. Then he body flickers away, leaving Naruto, Sakamo, and Izumi confused but the three proceed to follow his example, saying goodbye to their friends and body flickering away. Hiruzen smiles as his future team, alright meet me at training ground 7, and we'll discuss what happens next. With that heat to body flickers away, his team following after him a few seconds later. Training ground 9. Two minutes later. The three genin of team 9 appear at training ground 9 just two minutes after Danzo. The man hums in acceptance of this, alright now that you're here let's start off with introductions. I want your names, your likes, your dislikes, your current skills, and your hopes for the future. I'll start. They all nod at him, paying attention rapidly. My name as you already know is Danzo Shimura, I am a Jonin of the Leaf, formerly an Anbu captain. My likes are training, the village, and my fiancé. My dislikes are slackers, traitors to the village, and Hiruzen always being a step ahead of me. As for my current skills, well that I'll leave a mystery for you to find out later. I'll say this though I have a main elemental affinity for wind. As for my hopes for the future, I want the village to thrive. They all blink at this as Naruto thinks, so he's not yet a war hawk, well that's good. Hopefully me and the team can change him for the better. He comes back to reality when Danzo points to Sakamo, you next silver. The silver haired boy scowls slightly at this my name is Sakamo Hatake, I'm the heir to the minor Hatake clan. My likes are training learning new kanjutsu stances spicy foods and my friends. My dislikes are sweet foods, people who mess with my friends, and anyone who bad talks kanjutsu. My skills are pretty good, I can throw kunai and shuriken with absolute precision other than that I'm not telling. Danzo nods at this and then turns to Izumi your next Uchiha girl. Izumi scowls at him and replies my name is Izumi Uchiha, I am a member of the Uchiha clan. My likes are training, learning all about genjutsu and medical jutsu dango, flower arranging, and my new friends. My dislikes include the arrogance of most of my clan, perverts, people who say women can't be as strong as men, and those who put down genjutsu. As for my skills I think I'll take your root sensei and keep those a secret for you to figure out on your for my dreams for the future I want to be a great kunoichi and have my name etched into history as the greatest mistress of genjutsu ever. Then I want to settle down and have a family with a man I love. The black haired man chuckles at her attitude, then turns to his last student, You're the last one, Red. Instead of getting angry or annoyed like he expects, Naruto just smiles as he responds, My name is Naruto Izumaki, I'm a member of the Izumaki clan, as well as part of the Senju family. My likes are ramen training, gardening, my friends, and the village. My dislikes are the three minutes it takes for the water to boil for ramen, perverts people who look down on others just to make themselves feel better, 
and those who trample on nature. My dream for the future is to bring peace to the elemental nations through understanding and common goals, then to have a family. Danzo blinks at this and can't believe the conviction behind the boy's words however he snorts at them, peace through understanding and common goals that impossible in the world we currently live in is a maki san. Also I notice you skipped over your skills. The red head shakes his head as he replies, I don't think it's impossible. You can disbelieve all you want, but I'll prove you wrong. As for my skills. Not telling. Sakamo and Izumi chuckle at his last words, while Danzo looks contemplative however he shakes it off and informs them alright well you've all passed the first part of your real genin test. You all kept your skills secret which is a must for a shinobi. However that was just the preliminary part, the main part starts now. At this Sakamo and Izumi are confused as the black haired girl questions, what do you mean real genin test? I thought we passed the genin test in the academy. The 25 year old smirks at this and answers that test was to see who had what it takes to become ninja. The real genin test is administered by the jonin and is meant to weed out the weak from the strong. Amongst all the graduates 66% will fail their real genin test, the other 33% will end up passing and becoming actual genin. Time to find out if you three are part of the second group. Both Sakamo and Izumi balk at this, however all three notice that Naruto isn't at all surprised by this revelation. Sakamo decides to ask his friend, why don't you seem surprised by this Naruto? The red head smirks, I knew about the real genin test a long time ago. Itama-san told me about the test that his uncle the second Hokage gave to Lord Third and his teammates when they became genin. I just kept it to myself because it's supposed to be a surprise for the newly graduated genin. Danzo however sighs at this, placing his left hand at his waist and his right hand against his headband, I'm going to have to have a talk with Itama-senpai about revealing secrets. Naruto shakes his head and replies, don't be too hard on him Danzo-sensei, in his defense he'd had a lot of sake before he told me. The black-haired man shakes his head in exasperation, but quickly gets back on track, alright well your test will be this. He takes two scrolls from his pouch, and holds them out for them to see, it will be your job to get these two scrolls from me within each scroll is the registration forms for active shinobi. Izumi decides to point out the obvious, but sensei there are only two scrolls. He nods his head, you're correct Ichiha-san, this means that only two of you will pass, the one who does not get a scroll will be dropped from the shinobi program completely and have all their chakra sealed off forever. Each of them reacts shocked to this, even though unknown to all Naruto's shock is faked. The man is satisfied by their faces and continues your mission, is to get these scrolls from me before lunch. If you don't one of you will be tied to the posts, and will have to remain here for all of lunch. However, as an added challenge, you'll have locate me in order to even attempt to get the scrolls from me. When you find me come at me with the intent to kill. Your time begins now. With that he throws down a smoke bomb causing the three children to close their eyes and cover their noses and mouths. When they open their eyes again Danzo is gone. Sakamo and Izumi immediately prepare to head off in different directions to find Danzo and get a scroll however Naruto stops them wait guys. This causes them to pause and look at him questioningly, you need to stop and think. Why would only two of us pass while the third fails? As far as I know the leaf is known for its four-man teams not three-man teams. The two six-year-olds consider his words and it's Sakamo who comes to the logical conclusion first, it's a test of teamwork. Danzo-sensei is trying to pit us against each other so that we automatically fail. The redhead nods at this as Izumi chimes in, then we need to work together to track him and take the scrolls from him. The two boys nod along to this, and so the three fresh genin gather together in a circle, and put their heads together to come up with a plan to take on their new sensei. Unknown to them the man they're conspiring against is watching them from the surrounding trees with a smirk as he thinks to himself they figured it out pretty quickly, then again Izumaki and Hitake are two of the three prodigies of their class. Hirizen was a fool to take on the balance team. He should have paired two of the prodigies together with the Senju heiress, that would have been an unstoppable team. Oh well his mistake is my game. Let's see how well they do together against me. Just the then three children break apart and Naruto proceeds to do something that shocks Danzo very much for it is something the second Hokage used to do all the time. 
The redhead places a finger to the ground and closes his eyes and extends his senses searching for Danzo's chakra signature, letting the man know the boy is a sensor. A few moments later Naruto smiles and opens his eyes and stands up, then using hand gestures signals to his teammates where their teacher is and the three proceed to vanish by a body flicker. A moment later his danger sense screams at him so he jumps off the tree branch he was sitting on, and a moment later he sees out of the corner of his eye a huge fireball set the whole tree on fire. He lands in the clearing he began in and instantly takes out a kunai to blocks a bunch of shuriken, then tosses the kunai in the direction the stars came from only to hear the thunk of metal hitting wood smart used a replacement, as soon as I threw the kunai. Then from the river he hears his red-haired student's voice call out water release, raging wave Sutan Mizarapa. He turns to see Naruto spewing a large volume of water from his mouth like a waterfall. He speeds through hand seals quicker than the eye can see and takes a breath as he calls out wind release vacuum wave Futon Shinkyo. As he begins to spin and releases the breath he took which compresses it into a single blade of wind which covers a large area, cutting through the wave of water. When he stops spinning he doesn't get any time to rest as he's placed on the defensive as all three of his students attack him with Teijutsu. He smiles internally as he notices them working in perfect harmony, taking in the fact that while two of them pour on the pressure the third tries to sneak a reach for his pouch to get the scrolls, only for him to send one of the others into that one. After 20 minutes of straight Teijutsu he sees Izumi go through hand seals before calling out demonic illusion Hellfire Magen, Jigoku Gaupa no Jutsu. A moment later he finds himself engulfed in red-hot flames. However he realizes it's just a genjutsu and so he cuts the flow of chakra through his body, and then releases a huge burst of his chakra which shatters the illusion just in time to hear Naruto say, Ukuto high accuracy dan hundred crack snap. As he rushes the man and unleashes a barrage of punches at him that makes it look like he has 100 fists. He notices as he's blocking all the six-year-old strikes with ease, although most low to mid-level Chunin would have trouble with them, that he is now missing his wrist and ankle weights. After the the last strike Naruto hops back from the man, and soon his teammates join him with smiles on their faces. He scowls at the smiles on their faces, I don't know what you're smiling about. You haven't even gotten a hold of the scrolls from me. Just then Izumi and Sakamo go into their hip pouches and pull out the scrolls shocking him as he goes back to his pouch, and finds that the scrolls aren't there anymore. Sakamo decides to gloat a little, you were saying Danzo sensei. Looks like you were so busy with Naruto that you forgot it was three on one. He smirks at this, you got me there. Got to say your Teijutsu is impressive as a Maki. Now since Hitake and Izumi got the scrolls that means that they pass and you fail. He expects that hearing this will cause Naruto to turn on the other two, however he's further shocked when they throw the scrolls back to him with Izumi commenting sorry Danzo sensei, but if Naruto fails then so do we. After all it was him who kept us from turning on each other, and the majority of our battle plan came from him. So either pass all of us or don't pass any of us. At the end she punctuates her statement with a confident look. He turns towards Sakamo and asks, do you feel the same way Hitake? The silver-haired boy nods his head seriously. He looks at the three of them standing together confidently and sighs, all right then you all. Pass. This causes them to all smile happily and celebrate with a group high five, all right settle down. Yes you all pass and the four of us are now officially team Danzo. As you surmised in the beginning it was a test of teamwork and the reason that 66% fail is because they choose to look out only for themselves and not refuse to work together. They forget their history and that the reason the leaf is the strongest of the five great villages is because of teamwork as established by Lord First Hokage. They nod along to his words as he continues on, now you have the rest of the day off. I have to go and inform Hiruzen that you three passed. I want you all here tomorrow at 6 a.m. for team training, then after lunch we'll take a couple of D ranks, then after that a couple more hours of training, and then home for dinner. Now get out of here you brats. The three laugh at that and turn to leave, however the black-haired man calls out, Naruto stay back for a moment. The redhead looks confused but nods turning to his friends, why don't you guys go ahead, I'll meet you guys at the red leaf to celebrate our becoming a team. They nod and walk off, as he turns back to the jonin, what did you need Danzo sensei? 
The man stares at him seriously before answering, I wanted to know about your Taijutsu style. I've never heard of a Hukuto style before, where exactly did you learn it, and what's its focus? I noticed that you aimed your strikes for certain areas. Naruto blinks at this, impressed with the man's observation skills, it's actually called Hukuto Shinkan. I learned it from a scroll that was in the Senju archives thanks to Maito Obeson. It's an ancient style from before the time of the Sage of the Six Paths. It focuses on attacking 708 pressure points in the human body to destroy from within. But it can also be used to heal. Danzo is shocked to hear this, and impressed by the style as it seems similar to the Hugo clan's gentle fist except it doesn't target the Tenkatsu. He shakes it off and nods his head to the boy, it sounds like a truly deadly style. Also I've heard you have all five elemental affinities. I can't really help you much with most of them, I can teach you wind manipulation as well as some wind jutsu, and I can help with fire manipulation as it's my secondary element. Other than that every other element you'll have to learn on your own. The redhead nods accepting to this and asks, is there anything else Danzo sensei? The man shakes his head at this so the boy turns around and runs off. A few moments later Danzo himself leaves the training ground via body flicker, making his way to the Hokage's office. Hokage office. 15 minutes later. All of the Jonin sensei of the newly graduated Genin are standing around the office of the third Hokage, however said man is absent which is causing a few to get impatient. A few seconds later the 25-year-old cage arrives behind his desk via body flicker and looks at them all apologetically sorry to keep you all waiting my test with Team 7 ran a little long. Well let's begin, as I call each of your names step forward and say if your team passed or failed. With that he calls the Jonin of teams 1 through 6 and hears that only team 4 passed, then it gets to team 7 well I'm happy to announce that team 7 passed by the skin of their teeth. During the initial test which was the bell test, they thought of only themselves. Tanate Senju and Orochimaru Hebi managed to each get a bell, while Drea was tied to the stump. I failed them then gave a secondary test. I gave a lunchbox each to Orochimaru and Tsunade and told them we would start again after lunch and not to feed Drea then I body flickered away to hide and watch what they would do. This test they passed by each offering the boy a part of their lunches. In the end they understood the importance of teamwork and thus Team Hiruzen is now official. Everyone is surprised to hear this except for Danzo, who knew the man wouldn't have failed the granddaughter of the founder, or the third prodigy of the academy. After that Team 8 Sensei says that her team failed, and that brings it to Danzo, Team 9 passed with flying colors. That really shocks everyone as the man has never passed any team before so Sarutobi decides to ask, really Danzo? That's surprising considering your track record. Pray tell how did they pass your test? The black-haired man continues to lean against the wall with his arms crossed as he answers. Well they got the gist of the test from the beginning. Izumaki got it right off and then helped the other two to come to the same conclusion. After that I was surprised to find out that Izumaki is a sensor type like Lord Second, and they found me pretty quickly. After that they kept me on my toes with good teamwork, first the Achiha girl flushed me out of my hiding spot with a fireball then the Hatake boy tried to get me with Shuriken which I blocked with a kunai and then threw the kunai at him, but he substituted with the almighty log. At this everyone chuckles and bows their heads in reverence of the log. He clears his throat and continues then Izumaki used one of his five elemental natures and fired off a C-rank water jutsu at me which I countered with a B-rank wind jutsu. After that the three attacked me in unison with Taijutsu and worked pretty damn well together as two would try to distract me while the third went for my pouch that failed. So then the Achiha cast a Genjutsu on me to make me think I was consumed in flames, I broke it pretty quickly however it gave Uzumaki enough time to set up an advanced Taijutsu attack. Blocking the boy's strikes distracted me enough that I lost track of the other two and they managed to get the scrolls from me. When I told them they passed and Izumaki failed they threw the scrolls back to me and said they all pass or they all fail. So I passed them for showing solidarity. Therefore Team Danzo is now official. Everyone looks on in shock and some pride at this as he addresses Sarutobi, Hiruzen I have to say you were a fool to not take all the prodigies together, that would have been an unstoppable team. As it is the two prodigies I have as well as the second best female student are going to be a hell of a team I'm actually looking forward to training the snot-nosed brats. 
The third Hokage smiles at this, glad to hear you say that, Danzo. I look forward to our first joint team spar training session to see who the better teacher is. After that it continues on to the last team, Team 10 who unsurprisingly failed. With that over Sarutobi dismisses everyone except Danzo, and as the man stands there staring at his former friend and rival he can't help but to think back to more innocent days. He quickly shakes his head and speaks to the former Anbu, Danzo I want you to make sure you get to know your students. Cultivate relationships with them, be an older brother figure to them and guide them down a good path. Don't be standoffish with them and treat them as disposable tools. Remember that shinobi are people and each one has something different they fight for. His fellow 25-year-old just nods his head at this, don't worry Hiruzen. If I'm going to take the time to teach these kids then I'm not going to treat them like they aren't worth my time. You just worry about your team and be prepared to nurse their broken egos in a month from now. If there is nothing else Hokage-sama. The brown-haired man shakes his head and the other man body flickers away, leaving the Hokage to do his paperwork and think about what kind of training to put his new team through starting tomorrow. Three months later. Training ground 9. It's been three months since the team placements and the true genin tests. In that three months both teams 7 and 9 have continued to grow as shinobi. With team 9 they have been learning a great deal from Danzo, every morning except Saturdays and Sundays, they gather at training ground 9 for morning training they start off every morning with a workout of push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, squats, chin-ups, laps around the training grounds, and then a group spar, strictly taijutsu. After that they take a break for an hour then they move on to improving their skills, first taijutsu, correcting all the mistakes from their earlier spar, and moving on to the next set of kata of their individual styles. After Teijutsu is Kenjutsu, now that was a bit hard for Izumi at first as she'd never even touched a sword so Danzo told her to ask her uncle Kagami to help her find a Kenjutsu style that would suit her. The next day she showed up with dual Kodeki and an old Kenjutsu style called Kodeki Nido Ryu double Kodeki style. So since then she's been learning how to use it to a good level, while her teammates have been increasing their proficiency with their own unique styles. After Kenjutsu is Ninjutsu training. Danzo has the belief that in order to properly use elemental Ninjutsu one has to have a good grasp of said element. In that vein he's been teaching them the first steps of elemental manipulation for each one it's different. For Naruto he has to turn cut a leaf in half using wind chakra for Izumi she has to burn a leaf starting from the center by converting her chakra into pure heat, and for Sakamo he has to make the leaf crumple up between his hands by turning his chakra into electricity. Each one has made pretty good strides, Naruto has managed to cut three-fourths of the leaf with his wind chakra, Izumi has managed to burn half of her leaf from the center with her fire chakra and Sakamo has managed to crumple three-fourths of his leaf with his lightning chakra. Besides that he's taught them a few more jutsu for each of their elements so they now each have three C-rank elemental jutsu apiece. After ninjutsu of course is genjutsu, a subject which Izumi excels in, especially now that she has her Sharingan. At the end of the first month of their training Danzo decided it was time that girl activate her family's bloodline, and so he asked the members of his former Andu team to attack the girl on her way home, and make their attempts to kill her as real as possible. The ploy worked and that night Izumi activated the Sharingan, ever since her genjutsu prowess has increased, even though she chooses not to learn any new genjutsu with her bloodline. Naruto and Sakamo on the other hand have managed to learn only a few minor genjutsu demonstrating that neither one will ever be true genjutsu types. After genjutsu training is always lunch, then they take on the ranks which in Naruto's own words are meaningless tasks that the civilians are too damn lazy to do themselves. Things like painting fences, weeding gardens, walking dogs, and the worst of all, capturing the fire lady's cat, Sora. They've taken that mission five times already, and each time the redhead swears that Sora must be the father or grandfather of Tora the demon cat from his original time. Just like the latter mentioned cat, Sora hates his and Sakamo's guts and always seems to relax when held by Izumi. It's enough that Sakamo always comments about how cats like that are why he's a dog person. After Evil D ranks they return to the training grounds and do two more hours of training focusing mainly on teamwork and chakra control. After the two hours are up they head home for dinner and to rest up to start the process over the next day. On their days off each one spends time relaxing and working on individual projects at their own homes. 
For Izumi she spends her time continuing to learn her kenjutsu so that she can catch up to her teammates in that area for Sakamo he spends time with his father learning the responsibilities of being the next head of the Hotake clan, as well as taking care of the puppies of the family's dog summons. Naruto spends his days off continuing his studies of Fuinjutsu under the careful watch of Maito. Recently he got some good news from the elder redhead, he has reached a level in Fuinjutsu that he is now considered a level 2 seal master, which means he's only 8 levels away from being a level 10 seal master. However she stopped his excitement at the announcement by telling him about 18 levels from being an Izumaki seal master but said that once he reaches level 10 she'll give him her brother-in-law's notes on a special Jikyuken ninjutsu that the man developed and that she has no doubt that he'll be able to improve it when the time comes. Another thing to happen over the last three months is that Team 7 and 9 have had two training slash sparing sessions to test their skills and the efficiency of their teachers. Unfortunately for Team 7 they've lost both the spars, mainly because Team 9's teamwork is way better as they work as a cohesive unity while the three members of Team 7 spend half their time fighting each other, especially Drea and Orochimaru. Tane tries to play mediator between her teammates, however that quickly fails and her temper comes to the forefront when Drea calls her flat chest and she proceeds to beat him down. However thanks to the training part of the sessions, the 2s rank shinobi have found out that the members of their teams work well together, especially with Naruto leading all of them. That's something both men noticed immediately in the first session, initially Team 7 continued to bicker blaming one another for their loss, however the redhead stepped in and stopped their arguing and said they were all to blame and needed to work on how to be a team better. Then he lead them through training, instructing each of them on where they needed to be and what they needed to work on to be better. They even decided to switch up their team's configuration during the second training session. They paired Naruto with Zanade and Drea first and the Izumaki didn't disappoint, leading the two other kids to a victory over Orochimaru, Sakamo, and Izumi in a game of Capture the Flag. Then they paired him with Sakamo and Orochimaru to see if having the three prodigies together would work out, and it did marvelously. The three worked in Prefect Unity, each one understanding what the other was thinking immediately, and they even won the second game of Capture the Flag. Then they paired Naruto with the two girls and the same results, he lead them to victory, both of them hanging on his every word and command, especially Sinead who they noticed has a huge crush on the boy. Finally they teamed him up with Drea and Orochimaru, and he actually managed to get the two boys to put aside their differences, and work together as a unity, and just barely eke out another victory. After witnessing this they realized that among the group of six that Naruto is without a doubt the linchpin, as well as the de facto leader. Today finds the two teams preparing for their third spar in the last three months. Hiruzen and Danzo are standing to the side ready to call the match to begin. Both teams are huddled together in separate circles discussing how to best handle their opponents. Naruto gives the plan to his teammates, alright here's how this is going down. Sakamo I want you to focus on Orochimaru, you're about equal in Teijutsu, but if it comes down to ninjutsu your lightning element cancels out his wind and vice versa. The silver-haired boy nods to this, good thinking as usual Naruto. I have to say that I was going to suggest just that, you know me well buddy. The redhead smiles at him. He then turns to Izumi, Izumi you're going to take Drea. His weakness is genjutsu, he sucks at it so hit him with one that will take him out of the fight. I'll take the Nechan, I know how to neutralize her teijutsu style, also just like with Orochimaru and Sakamo, I have the cancelling element to her lightning. When I get the chance I'll slap a paralyzing seal on her, despite being part as a maki she sucks at fuinjutsu. The black haired girl nods along to this, understood Naruto. I'll hit the little pervert with the perfect genjutsu for someone like him. Tsune chan may get mad at you for using a seal on her. Naruto chuckles at this, it'll be okay, even if she gets mad she'll forgive me by the end of the night, after all we're best friends. This causes his teammates to sweat drop, and think, more like because she has a freaking crush on you moron. With that they break apart and stand ready for the spar. Team 7 on the other hand are not as good on the planning, as Drea can be heard loudly declaring, I'm kicking Sakamo's butt. Oraki Tem you can have Naruto, and Flat Chest you can take Billboard Chest. Now let's go. His comments have the effect of making Orochimaru Naruto and Sakamo to shake their heads, while Tsunade and Izumi both gain tick marks over their eyebrows as they both go red in feminine fury. 
However, before the blonde-haired girl can do anything about it, the impatient boys goes rushing forward to take on his self-appointed opponent. Seeing this team nine immediately go into action, Sakamo and Naruto vanish by a pure speed and appear in front of Orochimaru and Sanei respectively and begin to engage them in Teijutsu. Drea seeing this groans, oh come on. I said I wanted Sakamo, damn it. Then he feels someone tap him on his shoulder and feels a shiver go down his spine as he turns to find Izumi smiling sweetly at him with her sharing Gan active. As soon as he makes eye contact with her he hears demonic illusion, anti-pervert jutsu. As soon as those words are uttered his world changes as he proceeds to be subjected to unspeakable images and starts screaming like a little girl before passing out muttering to many dudes. T.O. Much Penis. Izumi smirks in triumph as she gives him a good swift kick to the balls for extra measure and walks away, while hearing Sanate say way to go Izumi-chan. The two 25-year-old teachers each do different things, Danzo chuckles at the stupidity of the white-haired boy, while Hiruzen puts his face in the palm of his hand and shakes his head, why must Dreya-kun be such a fool? Naruto and Sanade continue their exchange of teijutsu as they seem to be equal, causing the blonde-haired girl to smile, good to see you're keeping up with your training Naruto-kun. But I thought that by now you'd be much better than this. The red head shakes his head with a smirk. Oh you want to see better Su Chan. This causes her to blush and mess up on of her strikes, giving him the chance to get into her guard, as he goes into his hip pouch scaring her. However her fear quickly recedes when she sees he's just getting out of paper however she gets a surprise he slaps it to her chest, makes a ram seal and says paralysis seal activate. Right after he says it, the paper on her chest lights up with chakra and sends a miniature shock through her nervous system causing her body lock up and making her unable to move. She proceeds to glare at him, no fair Naruto-kun. You distracted me so you could use Fuinjutsu on me. Let me go right now. Naruto smiles sheepishly at her, sorry Sanei-chan I can't do that, not until Sakamo has finished with Orochimaru. Also you should know that when it comes to being a ninja there is no such thing as fair. So please just stay there for a little while longer, and then I'll release you. She just proceeds to glower at him in response. However she doesn't get to do it for long as she looks over to the fight between Orochimaru and Sakamo to see that the silver-haired boy now has the point of his tanto to the throat of the down black-haired boy you have no choice Orochimaru, you must yield. The pale-skinned boy knows he's right so he sighs and responds, you are correct Sakamo-san I yield. Sakamo smiles at this as he puts his blade away and helps his friend up. Naruto proceeds to make the ram seal again and say paralysis seal release. The seal on Sanade's chest glows again, and then falls off, a moment later she finds herself able to move freely again. Izumi can be seen to be waking up Drea by pouring cold water over his head. The two teachers look at them all seriously and as Hiruzen is about to speak to his team first a bird-masked Anbu appears kneeling in front of him. Hokage-sama we have a problem. The brown-haired man instantly goes into his Hokage mode report. The masked man immediately responds, our sentries have reported that there is a large group of bandits making their way towards Tanzaku town. According to the reports, they number at least 200. Also it appears that they are being led by a missing nin from Rock. Hiruzen takes this in and asks, who is the nin, and what's his level? The elite shinobi answers promptly, the ninja in question is Daichi Kuratetsu. A minus rank jonin level. The mayor of Tanzaku requests an immediate mission to take out the group. Before Saratobi can respond again, Danzo speaks up, my team and I would be more than happy to help the people of Tanzaku town and destroy the bandits Hokage-sama. The brown-haired man looks at his former friend seriously, are you sure about this Danzo? This mission is B rank, and your team are still fresh out of the academy. The black-haired man nods his head, yeah I'm sure. In fact you could make it two missions. A C rank for the genin of protecting Tanzaku and eliminating the bandits as well as a B rank for myself of taking out Kuratetsu. Then third Hokage thinks about this a moment, and then nods his head, alright then, but the condition for this is that the C rank is for both teams 7 and 9 together. I think it's time my team got some experience outside the village walls as well. Danzo nods in acceptance of this as he continues, alright then team 7 and 9 your mission is to protect Tanzaku town from the bandit horde, and when the opportunity presents itself eliminate every last one of them. 
Danzo Shimura, sensei of Team Nine, your mission is to track down the rough, rock shinobi Daichi Kuratetsu and send him to the next life. You all set out in two hours, dismissed. He gets a round of yeezus from all the children as they rush off to their homes to prepare for their first ever real mission. Here Zen turns to Danzo with complete seriousness, giving the man a look that proves why he is called the god of shinobi. Their safety is in your hands Danzo. Make sure they all come back safely and with only minor injuries because if they die or come back seriously wounded then I will remind you exactly why I am known as the god of shinobi. Danzo for his part seems unfazed however he nods his head, don't worry Hiruzen and the children will be perfectly fine I want all them to come within even a meter of my fight with Kuratetsu. Bandits pose no real problem for shinobi, even if those shinobi are a bunch of six-year-olds. Saratobi nods empirically at this as his former friend body flickers away to prepare for the missions. The man called the third Hokage decides he should get back to his office to finish paperwork as well as prepare for Mito to come to him to complain about giving Sinead and Naruto a C rank. Perhaps I can convince her that there won't be any kind of problem by assigning another Jonin to watch over the two teams while Danzo is completing his mission. Last thing I need right now is to have the matriarch of the Senju clan screaming in my ear with that infamous Izumaki temper. With that thought in mind he himself body flickers back to his office hoping nothing terrible happens. That's it for this part if you enjoyed it then like, share and subscribe for the next video as it's going to be more interesting, and also check out the other playlist hope you would like them too.